Football Saturday is finally here in California, Pennsylvania. A beautiful day here on this Saturday as California will play host to the Gannon Golden Knights. Hello, everyone, and welcome uh, and welcome to joining us here. My name is Jonathan Sabe. Alongside me here today will be Jonathan Sakaguchi. Johnny, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. Uh, say, uh, it's sunny. E, it's warm. Feels more like we should be covering baseball today than it should be e, football. Uh, a little bit on the breezy side. That might play a factor here or later on, but we'll see. E, but looking forward to this one, and as it's going to be a good matchup of two, with uh, two pretty even teams. Yeah, two even teams. A lot on the line here in this game, especially for the Golden Knights as we see the Vulcans players coming to the field before this game. I know uh, we do have a tail of the tape for today's matchup. Johnny, what do we have? So oh, take a look at this one. Uh, and both teams pretty are starting off points per game in dead even in 32.8 points a game, game for both sides. However, are different in the passing yards. The Vulcans have the lead in that one, 247 and almost 248, right behind them is Gannon at 249 per game, followed by rushing yards, 144 yards per game for the Vulcans. However, Gannon edges them in that one at 164. Total yardage is pretty even and not separated by about 30 points. The Vulcans trail old Gannon 411 into 392 in that one. And then time of possession, pretty even in that one too. The Vulcans ha have the difference though, 28 eight minute minutes in about 30 seconds. And then Gannett in 27 minutes and 32 seconds. And so, so about a, a little less than a minute difference there er, on that. Ad. And which is interesting to me is like you said, you read off all the stats. Uh, both these teams so similar in terms of stats in every aspect, but the records wouldn't really reflect that. Gannon coming into this game seven and two on the year, five and one in the conference, and California coming in five and four overall, and four and two in the conference. And it's just it's crazy to me that these two teams can come in here so evenly matched, but uh, be so uh, different in terms of their record on the season. Yeah, and one thing that we t that we have to also talk about out is the big upset that Gannon and pulled last week, knocking off off, re off regional and nationally ranked. Hanged IUP at home last week for their, their, their homecoming game, and a stunning matchup as that had as we were a little shocked when we were at Mercyhurst last week. Yeah, and, and with that win that Gannon did get over IUP, now has a three-way tie for first place in the PSAC West between IUP Gannon and Slippery Rock. And as I understand it, coming into this game. Uh, if all three of these teams, if all three of IUP, Gannon, and Slippery Rock win their games today, IUP would win the conference, the PSAC West. If for Gannon to win the conference, they would need to win here today. They would need Slippery Rock to lose their matchup today. And then for Slippery Rock to win the conference, they would need to win and they would need IUP to lose. So the, it all goes back to IUP. IUP needs to win their game. And, that, and if that's the case, nothing else matters. Exactly. They so oh, the Vulcans and the first. Want to toss deferred till the second half. So Gannon and elected to receive even a good choice here for the Vulcan and getting the wind into their backs here to start the first half. The Vulcans will kick off wearing their black and white going from right to left. Gannon and the uh, white and gold going from left to right. Their kickoff is underway. It'll go back into the end zone for the touchback. And now will come this Golden Knights offense. Johnny, what do we have for the starters? So starting off for the Golden Knights offense, and it's Evelyn Robel at left tackle, old Jacob uh, Petit Eat at left guard, Jordan Caverto oh, at center, Ern Montana uh, Neverett hit at right guard, Robel, Riley Noble all oh, over at right hey, tackle, old oh, Whitaker Curtis Marva is or uh, Marvelin Blanks, names Betis Freeman Stanley A Scapo O oh, and and. Branson Stanley, aim. don't know if those two are related at all, all at wide receiver. And this Gannon uh, Golden Knight offense has been high powered all season, led by Corey Curtis in the shotgun, takes the snap, fakes the handoff, quick pass onto the left hand side with the screen, gets, uh, gets brought down just past the 30 yard line and uh, while we have a moment to talk about it, the starters for this Vulcan defense, this defense has been fantastic all year. And, and ranked third in the nation right now of all Division II, who four run defense, and it's Gerald Brown, Derek Corboy, and Gage Hill up front. The Miller brothers at linebacker with Matt Toby, he and Jack Kalechi, he, Micah Tillman, Dominic Solomon Jr., Kevon Mormon, and Noah Hamlin. Clayton Rosenstill will start as the punter. 
And like you said, the third in the def uh, third in the nation for a reason on rushing defense. That run, that time by number two, Blanks Melvin Blanks, here. gets brought down for a loss. So bring up a third and five now for Brown the Golden Knights. Line Four to gain is the 35-yard line. Play, Speaking and of, of which, down. on that, that run defense and say eighth last five. week, the Vulcans held Mercyhurst to negative seven rushing yards or its total all for the game. I mean, <laughs> that's some that's certainly something. Trips on the near side for the Golden Knights. Uh, Curtis in the shotgun, back to his left. A uh, low snap, but Curtis picks it up. Is it gonna get run down? Two players in the backfield, bringing him down for the sack. And who else? Number 40, Gabe Miller is gonna get credited with that one. They're gonna get also add him, him with uh, Gerald Brown on that one. As we take a look at the replay here, safe. It looks like a good formation for for the Gannon Golden Knights, but uh, as we see here, er, the bull rush from that uh, those guys up front in the box stepped up and clip, and then Miller and and the core boy, he's going to get there er, and for the stop up and wrap him up, and it's fourth down. On yeah, huge stop for the Vulcans. Back to punt was uh, is going to be number seven, Corey Curtis, going from the quarterback to the punting position. Curtis's punt kind of shanked off the side of his foot. Will go out of bounds right around midfield. We can talk, and this Vulcan offense will get to the field for the first time today. We can talk about the starters. This offense has been great. And let's take a look at the starters now. Oh, Noel Browse, Jaheim Basham, um, Bryce Perkins, Matt Charlton, and, and Fritz Kelly e. Edmund in the lineman to start er, for the Vulcans. Back at, at tight end, and it'll be Junior McConaughey at quarterback. Who else other than in the PSAC? He, one of the top players at quarterback, at Noah Mitchell, followed by his his running back, Eric McCann, the third, Jaquay Jackson, and Cam Tarrant and to round that out, out, out for the starters. Vulcans coming out three wide, has Williams in the backfield alongside Mitchell. Mitchell gets a snap, looking to his left, stepping up, quick pass, trying to find Jaquay Jackson. That pass will go incomplete. And speaking of Jaquay Jackson, we spent a lot of time yesterday looking at some statistics on him, having a fantastic season so far. 989 yards receiving this year. That is uh, seventh in the uh, Division Two in the uh, um, in all of Division Two in the entire college football. We twelfth in all of college football in receiving yards this season. Yeah, just 11 yards shy of that thousand yard or, or receiving mark. Mitchell gets the snap, handoff quick. That time ran into a wall. I believe Williams, Williams on the carry will be brought down about a gain of a half yard, maybe one. So bring up a third and long now for the Vulcans. Yeah, it looks like they're going to give him um, one yard, yard. but uh, those big big guys up front for Gannett and including Nick White, eight, Malik Bridgem, Bridgman, and, and Malachi Wood, Woody. He just a, a couple big guys right there for or the Golden Knights. A yeah, big uh, stop for the Golden Knights on second down. Third down now for the Vulcans. Trips on the near side. Williams still in the backfield next to Mitchell. One receiver on the far. Mitchell gets the snap. Looking to his left, stepping up into the pocket. Pass complete across the middle of the field. It's going to get brought down after a gain of a couple. I believe Malik Langley is the uh, receiver to make the catch. Would it bring up a fourth and seven now for the Vulcans? Yeah, Langley, he, uh, he had a ni nice little catch. That's there on the, on the, uh, the uh, go route out across the middle of the field. Old, something you don't see a whole lot because a lot of those guys don't like coming across because those linebackers are waiting to stick them. And sure enough, Langley, he was stuck right there. They're just on, on the opposite side of the 50. So two, three and outs for both offenses, one for either side. Frozen Steel back to punt now for the Vulcans. It's going to be Cam Snell back to return for the Golden Knights. Rosen still a couple of great punts last week. Offs. It looks like there was maybe a, a bit of a jump, but no call made by the referee. Rosen steals punt booming. Great kick and unfortunately doesn't get the spin that he needed. It's gonna roll back into the end zone for the touchback, but I'm surprised they didn't call an offside one. It looks like he's I, I, he his foot to me it looked like his foot crawled off the line. I mean, but the referee has a better angle than you and I do, say Abe. That's why we get paid to be up here, here, here at the press box. And they get to pay, he paid to call the game. Yeah, that was uh, a close call, but the uh, Golden Knights will take over uh, on offense from their own 25-yard line. Uh, last time these two teams faced was October 9th of last year, where California was able to get a big win, 38 to 17. Cal uh, Gannon, one win in their last 12 against the Vulcans. Last time they won was in 2018 here on homecoming, a big win, 29-15 in that game. Out comes Curtis and the Golden Knights offense once again. Receiver in motion, three wide. 
for the Golden Knights. Curtis back to pass, looking deep down the left-hand side. That pass brought in, great catch that time by Keyjohn uh, Batiste, able to bring that one in, uh, well past uh, midfield into Vulcan territory. Yeah, Batista a a was really, oh, let's look at the re uh, replay here. Here, I'm pretty sure he one-handed that into his arm. All right, so we look at the replay here, and it looks like exactly what he did. And as he pulled it in, and, and, that, and left the other one free to stiff arm the defender away. Yeah, fantastic catch there by Batiste. And now the Golden Knights will, uh, will take over at the Vulcans 48 yard line. Curtis in the shotgun. A uh, uh, bunch formation handoff this time. Uh, two blanks. Blanks making his way up the left hand side. Gets a little bit of room and gets run out of Blank bounds after carry. the first down. So uh, a couple plays in a row from the, this Golden Knights offense. Big chunk of yardage. Yeah, the Vulcans looking. <laughs> And it's got to come up with an answer here. I know it's early in the first quarter. Or still, oh, as we got uh, about 10.45 left to play here in the first. But still, oh, you got to come up with answers for that. Uh, that was the struggle last week for the Vulcan. And it was that outside rush. Golden Knights now at the Vulcan's 35-yard line. Batiste, or uh, Curtis, excuse me, in the shotgun. Three receivers to the near side. Curtis back to throw. Looking deep on that far post. Curtis's throw just out of the hands of his intended target, trying to find Mason. And I mean, it looks like it should have been a catch, but just couldn't quite grab that one in. That one, and I think Inc., if he catches it, we're calling on six points on the board, but uh, it overshot that one. And it looked like Mason kind of slowed up a little bit as he was heading downfield. I think my favorite part about our, st our sheet here today with the, the rosters is that it has Mason's uh, nickname on it, Tank. I love that. <laughs> Second and ten now. Curtis in the shotgun. Fakes the handoff. Quick pass this time to Curtis. Curtis with the screen is going to get brought down just past the 30 yard line, but a flag thrown in the vicinity. So we're going to wait to see what's going to be called on this one. I think this this is going to go against one of the receivers that er, looked like a uh, like a wedge form there for forming the for the uh, for Mason there. And as we you and I both know, can't get away with doing that. It's going to be a holding call on the offense against number four, Branson Stanley. So that'll move the, the line of scrimmage back even further. It'll be second and 20 now for the Golden Knights from the 45-yard line of the California Vulcans. And, I mean, uh, Vulcans need a quick uh, – uh, need all the help they can get here. I mean, two big plays and now have a chance to be able to stop uh, the Golden Knights offense right in their tracks. And this is where the defense needs to stand tall. Oh, I mean, you saw already get out to Curtis once. You need to do it again here. It's going to be a, a bunch formation again for the Golden Knights. Curtis fakes the handoff this time under a lot of pressure. And just like you said, they were able to get to him, not able to bring him down. Curtis able to complete the pass that time Whitaker to number eight, uh, Alex Whitaker. He's going to pick up a couple, but it's going to make up a third and long now for the Golden Knights. Yeah, as we saw, oh, they were bringing the pressure quickly. They say if, <coughs> if uh, Gerald Brown only gets one more handle on Curtis, I think it's going to be thir er, er, in about all 35. I have instead at a third and 14. Yeah, but great job there by Curtis, able to stand on his feet and able to make that throw. And so to bring up a third and 14 now for the Golden Knights. Five wide for Curtis and the offense here. Woken faithful, uh, getting loud for their defense to make a stop here. Man in motion now bunched on the near side. Curtis high snap this time, able to pull that one in. Quick pass, and that's Kurt wide open. Going to get brought down once again. Mason able to pull that one in for the first down. I almost thought he was going to overthrow him again. Yeah, that was look a at the close here. One. Let's take a look at the replay. They say, hey, watch here. As you see, he all kind of pressure coming on Curtis. Gets that one off just in time. I mean, that, and just over, almost got over the head of Mason there. Er, as he stumbles forward, er, and it's going to be first and goal now from the Vulcan four, or excuse me, the six yard line. Yeah, great tracking by Mason, able to pull that one in. Another big play for this Golden Knight offense. Bring up first and goal now from the, s uh, the five yard line. Trips on the near side, has blanks in the backfield with him. Curtis gets the snap, going to keep it himself. It looks like the ball may have came out there. On the Waiting to see the official call, but it looks like Curtis may have got hit on that one. Golden Balls. Looks like they signal old Vulcan football. I think, I think maybe, I think the Golden Knights are able to pick that one up. It'll be a gain at two, but got to be very lucky as we take a look at that replay. Yeah, there's the ball popping out, but I don't know who fell on it, and one of the Knights did fall on it. 
The Knights remain lucky as they keep the ball. Second and goal now. Curtis gets the snap looking quickly, firing to the right-hand side, trying to find Mason once again. That one overthrown. Bring up third and goal now. Interesting to see coming in this game, Mason, not one of uh, Curtis's top wide receivers, but seeing a lot of action here early on in this game. It's going to be third and goal now for the Golden Knights. Three receivers on the near side, one on the far. Blanks in the backfield with Curtis. Curtis gets the snap looking has plenty of time rolling now to his right under some pressure just throwing that towards the back of the end zone uh, incomplete nice catch by the, by the kid in the, on there or the back of the end zone oh, no, didn't fear away from it and <laughs> he stood tall yeah shout out to that kid for making the catch highlight of his day and it looks like uh, the Vulcans able to get a stop and bring out the field goal unit for the Golden Knights now so the Vulcans able to uh, able to hold uh, hold steady and able to uh, Force them to potentially only three. And Eric Scarpino oh, in the kick now for, for the Golden Knights as they get one late substitution in here. And we've already seen the Vulcans block a couple kicks this season. They did it last week against Mercyhurst. Hopefully, you see something like that as you hear the fan chanting block that kick. Snap. Scarpino's kick is up, and Scarpino's kick is good. So, with 7.39 left here in the first quarter, Gannon leads us 3-0. We'll be right back here on CUTV. CUTV Sports 1, the PSAC Network and 91.9 FM, the Vulcan Sports Radio Network. Vulcan football is back this fall. September 1st versus Fairmont State. September 10th at Kutztown. September 17th at Shepherd. September 24th versus Edinburgh. October 1st at Clarion. October 8th versus IUP. October 15th at Seton Hill. October 22nd versus Slippery Rock. October 29th at Mercyhurst. November 5th versus Gannon. November 12th versus East Stroudsburg. All games live on CUTV Sports 1 and the PSAC Network. Hello everyone, welcome back. Gannon with the lead, 3-0, 7.39 left here to play in the first quarter. It's gonna be uh, Donald Mason kicking off for the Golden Knights back deep to return is Tarrant and Harper. Harper gonna field this one from his own two yard line. Harper passing the 20, getting a couple blocks and nice job by the Vulcan special teams. Harper's still going and get brought down just shy of the 40 yard line. It's a great field position for this offense to start out. Yeah, good return there for the Vulcan. And they took that one and up over the third, over the 30 and across the 35 yard line and once again. And we've been talking about it all season and how close this Vulcan in offense has been getting into get, putting up, up a special teams touchdown. They've done it in on a block punt and a couple of times last, you know, once we go back to the game against Clarion, they've blocked field goal holes. I'm waiting for them to spring one on the, the kick return or in unit. And I feel like it's gonna happen before the end, between today and next Saturday. Oh, I'd love to see it. Vulcan's offense back out of first and 10. Mitchell under center, fakes the handoff to McKen Mitchell with the play action under a ton of pressure. Gonna get brought down for the sack. But that time, Malachi Woody there uh, first to bring him down. Woody. Yeah, uh, it looks like Mitchell was looking for the deep ball all with Jackson in and in that one-on-one -on -one coverage on the sideline. So we look here, er, we'll just us bull rush from um, Woody. He had just Browse couldn't keep up with him, um, and that's what I and we see Mitchell end up getting sacked there. Yeah, Mitchell just not enough time to make that throw. So bring up second and 18 now for the Vulcans from the 27. And this Vulcan offense no stranger to slow starts here on offense a couple times. We've seen them not have a, a good couple of first possessions, but able to bring it back. Mitchell uh, fumbles the snap Fumble on attempting to hand that one off to McCann. Waiting to see the call. Looks like they will they the will Vulcans. be able to get back on top of it. So third and long, extremely long now for the Vulcans. Yeah, yeah, Mi yeah McCann's going to fall on that one and recover it. It botched handoff there. Er yeah, unfortunate for the Vulcan offense. Mitchell going to lose four on that one. So bring up third and 22 now. 
for the Vulcan. Such a promising kick return. It's going to lead to a third and 22. Mitchell in the shotgun. Has McCann to his right. Four receivers, two on either side. Mitchell gets the snap. Stepping up in the pocket. Rolling now to his right. Under a ton of pressure again. He's going to get brought down for a sack again. And right around the line of scrimmage. That time, number 48, Hayden McDonald's going to bring him down. Yeah, uh, once again, and we see here, here are or all the or receivers for or, or the Vulcans covered on that one. Uh, and McDonald will just steps up, up as we saw Mitchell will trying to make something happen there with his legs and Lost just couldn't get it going. So great coverage once again by the Golden Knights will force the three and out again from this uh, Vulcan offense. Resin still back out to punt once again. Back deep to return will be Cam Snell for the Golden Knights. Snell standing about his own 33-yard line. Rosen steals punt. Gets underway. It's going to get fielded at the 37. Vulcan special teams down there. No room to run for Snell. Get, a, get brought down at the 39. So the Golden Knights offense going to come back out here with great brought field position. Yeah, good. Yeah, good, good coverage by the Vulcan and punt team as they managed to stop off that one there. First and 10 from the 39. First and 10 now from the 39. Last time Mount Gannon able to get a field goal, but the Vulcans able to hold them to only three after getting themselves first and goal from the six. So looking to uh, keep that, uh, that bend but not break mentality from this Vulcan defense to get a stop, get the offense back out there. Curtis in the shotgun, three receivers on the near side. High snap handoff this time. A decent hole, gonna get brought down right around the 45 yard line. That was Antonio Wright Jr on the, the carry that time uh, matt toby e and noah Dill oh and, and gerald brown are going to get that one but it looks like the the knights are going to go oh, with the hurry up offense going quickly here curtis quick pass screen on the far side it's going to get brought out after a first down that was branson stanley on the reception and this time the, the gold knights will once again be inside of uh vulcan territory first and ten from the 49. And the Vulcans need to come up with some sort of answer here. Yeah, looks like on they just and it's either a aware. big hit, big hit or, or some kind of turnover. They got to come up with something here. Trips on the near side. It's going to be right in the backfield alongside Curtis. Curtis gets a snap, looking to his right, firing quickly. That pass is nearly intercepted but completed. Going to get brought down around the 38-yard line. That was uh, Jonathan Bowden, Bowden, Bowden the on the on the catch, and that'll be enough for a first down. first down. Yeah, take a look at the replay here. Apis, we see from the 39. Yeah, a little bit of a high snap, so the Knights are going to have to watch that ad as we see here. Another completed pass. And it's on just these little quick little old, old stop-and-go routes for, or the Golden Knights or what work it, is working for them right now. So, oh, they're going to have to find a way a, a, to stop that at little, little hitch and go. Yeah, the center, Jordan Cavado, number 67, having a couple of uh, interesting snaps, a few low ones, a few high ones that time. Curtis gets the snap, pitches it to right, right, looking for a little bit of room, tries to bounce it to the outside, gets brought down after right a short gain. So great job right by that Vulcan secondary able to track him down. The clock will still be moving. 3.35 left to play here in the first Gain quarter. After that, that'll be a gain of two for Wright. Bring up second and eight now for the Golden Knights. Second down and eight. Three receivers on the near side. Curtis in the shotgun still has Wright alongside him to his left. Curtis gets a snap. Steps in, pass deep down the field. That pass is gonna be incomplete. And looks like there's a flag thrown in the backfield. Trying to find Branson Stanley on the throw, but I think this one might go against the Vulcans. Uh, that one I don't know, oh, but I think this one might come um, back against Gannon. Yeah, I'm not quite sure. Looks like that one was thrown in the backfield. Waiting to see the call from the referee. Usually the, if it's in the backfield, that's going to be holding. Finally waiting for an official call from the referee. Holding. And it will be. You're absolutely right. It'll be holding on number 76. Montana Neidert on the will uh, be the one faced with the penalty. The only reason I said it may be against the Vulcans because it kind of looked like Gerald Brown walking off the field. I was like, man, I really hope that isn't like a late hit or roughing the passer type call. But 
the Vulcans catch a break, bring up second and 18 now. Well, I thought the there Knights. was going to be another flank thrown down here, uh, but I thought it was going to be offensive pass interference, but I'll take the holding call. Either way, it backs the Knights up. Yeah, the Vulcans catch a break, second and 18 now from the, uh, from the 47 yard line. Curtis gets the snap, hands off to right, right, shifty, able to find a little bit of room, gets brought down at the 45, so third and long now for the Golden Knights. And this is what we're talking about as uh, we got a, a stoppage, one of the, uh, the safety pads uh, just rolling onto the field, all due to <laughs> the uh, high winds we have here this afternoon. Uh, as uh, here comes the field crew for the Vulcans <laughs> to go get it. I uh, was not expecting, I saw it, I kind of thought it was a trash can at first. I was like, how did that find its way on the field? But looks like it's taken care of. For, for now. The, for now, for now, yeah. Uh, oh, <laughs> oh you, you've probably heard it, whether in the crowd, Mike, in, in, uh, in our headsets as well. Oh, a little windy here er, to start the game. And on a rather er, warm fall afternoon. Yeah, surprisingly. Surprisingly beautiful day here. But, I mean, I've seen everything and anything in a football game. I didn't expect to see that. 2.15 left to play in the first quarter. Five wide for the Golden Knights. Three on the near, two on the far. Man in motion now. Curtis gets the snap, looking to his left. Quick pass. It's going to get pushed out of bounds. Complete that time to Branson Stanley. Right around the first down marker. Looks like he's going to get marked just short. So now decisions have to be made from the Golden Knights. I mean, he's short by about two yards on or there or safe. So oh, you either go for it or you try kicking into the wind here. Here or on four. On fourth and two, and it looks like they're going to try to go for it and try to s get the Vulcans to go offside. Yeah, that'd be a super long Come field on, goal on. for Scarpino to attempt. Like I said, it looks like the uh, the Golden Knights will keep the offense out here. Fourth and two. They're going to have to hurt. They got seven seconds on the play clock. Seven seconds on the play clock. It looks like the Golden Knights are going to take a timeout, talk things over, and that'll stop the clock with 124 yeah. left here in the first quarter. I think they were realizing what, what we saw too, ooh, the play clock winding down, so had to get something, and, and so oh, they're going to go over and talk things over. Yeah, I think they uh, like I think they took a little bit too much time uh, trying to figure out what they want to do, but uh, while we have a moment, we can take a look at today's PSAC schedule of games today. Three or two noon kickoff games, this one between Gannon and California, then on the other side, Westchester at Kutztown. And I do have a score update for us on that one. And right now, oh, Kutztown trails Westchester or 7 nothing early on. And then we have three 1 p.m. kickoffs. Shippensburg at Lockhaven, Edinburgh at Slippery Rock, and Shepherd at East Stroudsburg. And then three 2 p.m. kickoff games with Millersville at Bloomsburg, Clarion at IUP, and Mercyhurst at Seton Hill. Like we talk about, this game has a lot on the line for the Golden Knights. Need to get a win. To um, uh, to have a chance at winning the PSAC West, but also need Slip er, Slippery Rock to lose their game to Edinburgh later on today. But it looks like the Golden Knights, after that timeout, will send the offense back out here one more time. Fourth and two from the 31 yard line. Curtis in the shotgun, gets a snap, gonna fake the handoff. Quick pass is gonna be complete once again. It's gonna be Mason on the reception. It's gonna be enough for the first down. And, and Mason's lucky on that one. We'll look at the replay here, safe as we see a another er, high snap up from the Golden Knights, and he gets that off as Gerald Brown's getting ready to lay the smack down on him, um, but uh, gets completes the, it for the first and first down on, and then some. It's going to be a gain of seven on the play, first and ten now from the 24. One minute left here in the first quarter. Curtis in the shotgun, still going to have right alongside him. Right's going to be to his right. Two receivers on the near man in motion now. It's going to be uh, Mason moving around. They come in, handoff to right, right. Runs into a brick wall, and who else but Jail Brown going to throw him down for a loss. Well, he, oh, oh, Brown's going to get the wrap up there, and, the, and Matt Toby. He, and, and it looks like yeah, Noah Dillo oh, also jumping in there. As we take a look at the replay here, or safe, we see he had the blocker Mason, but Mason couldn't and not stand the size of of, Matt, of Gerald Brown and Matt Toby and Noah Dillo as the, he, they slant him from right down to the ground with authority. With that, it looks like Gannon 
Just going to let this time run out. Going to let the clock for the first quarter wind to zero as both teams make their way off of the field. And that'll be the end of the first quarter here at Addison Stadium. Gannon with the lead three to nothing. And don't go anywhere. We'll be right back here on CUTV, CUTV Sports 1, the PSAC Network and 91.9 FM, WCAO, the Vulcan Sports Radio Network. If you're buzzed and doing this, to make yourself feel okay to drive, ZWX. Uh, you're not okay to drive. Y G K L V W. Uh, regular you. Hello, everyone, and welcome back uh, to Adams and Stanton here for the second quarter coverage between uh, Gannon and California. We have some first quarter stats. Johnny, what do we have? So, oh, oh the Vulcan, and you have to get a first down in this game. Gannon has already gotten six. Uh, rushing your arts, or it's, uh, once again, Gannon, eight for 12. All of the Vulcans, four for 12. All of on rushing yard, all right, so far. Passing your arts, three for the Vulcans and 116 already for Gannon. Curtis going quickly, quick snap. That pass just over the head of his intended target, trying to find, I believe, number one, Batiste. A deep shot going to go a miss there, making up third and long now for the Golden Knights. Yeah, something that we're going to have to keep an eye on here er, is that at defense, and so they still. They stopped off them last time, and they got into the red, close to the red zone, right around the same area. Uh, so you gotta ho hope that the Vulcans can come up with another big defensive stop. Yeah, you'd love to see that if you're a Vulcan fan. This defense, like I talked about, that bend but don't break mentality. Third and 12 now for the Golden Knights. Curtis in the shotgun gets the snap. Toby on the on the side. Curtis throwing that one into the end zone. That pass is going to get caught but it's going to be out of bounds going to call that incomplete mason on uh, almost the reception we're going to bring up fourth down now for the golden knights and that's going to bring up a fourth down on and a, a long way to go and once again decisions have to be made here Let's i feel like you got to send the field goal unit out out now now you have the wind into your back blowing this way Oh, and down this way. Hey, you're on the far hash. Should be able to make the, this one. And with the assistance of the wind. You'd hope so. Scarpino coming out here to attempt the field goal. Like we talked about, a little bit windy, so you never know what could happen here. Snap. Scarpino's kick is up. And Scarpino's kick is no good. Looks like it, that one went wide right. So the Vulcans catch a break, and that'll be 14:43 left to go here in the second quarter. As we take a look at that missed kick once again. Yeah, let's look at the replay here. Here, John, as we see the kick is up, and it looks like, like he got a little too much much with it, and the wind just uh, hooked that one wide right. He'd so, oh, oh, the score's going to remain three nothing here er, in the second quarter. After the Vulcans, you needed that one, and you didn't want to fall behind anymore. The, they'll take over on offense from their own 27. Mitchell and company need to get uh, anything going here on offense. Mitchell will be in the shotgun. Two receivers on the far side. Mitchell gets the snap, hands this one off to Williams. Williams looking for some room. Uh, able to break a couple tackles as Williams going to get brought down right around the 35-yard line. And that, that was talking about, about all, all the good run. Uh, and Dante Williams was the workhorse for the Vulcans last week. Over 100, one of two who, who got running back acts over 100 yards rushing last week as we do have an injured Vulcan out. Oh. Yeah, I believe it is number 56, Jaheim Basham, the injured Vulcan down uh, after that play. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be Abe Basham um, down on for, for California. Uh, so the backup up will come in, in for him. That will be Jake Smedic. 
as we take a look here at the conference standings right now for or the Vulcans right now oh, although California sits in fourth place getting in and tied for first right now all oh, in that three-way deadlock between Slippery Rock and IUP at five and one in conference play a follow hold after all that at we have of Edinburgh Clarion Seton Hill who also picked up a win earlier this season and Mercyhurst Here's to wrap that uh, up. Also, oh, it should be noted, it, one team has already clinched their spot at, for the PSAC title game next week. That'll be Shepard. They're waiting to find out who their er, opponent will be after this week. Uh, Kutztown, Westchester, er, East Stroudsburg, Millersville, Bloomsburg, er, Shippensburg, and Lockhaven round out the rest of the conference over there as, as Basham's back up to his feet he, and being assisted off. You hate to see that. And hopefully it's nothing more than a cramp. Yeah, you'd hope so. And hopefully after getting some attention, everything will be all right with him. But like you said, Shepard already make their way to the title game. And today is going to be the big decider of who they are able to face between Gannon and Slippery Rock and IUP. But the game will go on 14-30 and moving here in the second quarter. Mitchell in the shotgun. Has Williams to his left. Going to take the snap, fakes the hand up, quick pass out to Jackson. Jackson with a little bit of room, going to get brought down just past the 40-yard line. And that's someone that the Vulcans need to get involved in this offense, and Shaquay Jackson. So uh, uh, with that, uh, Jackson's now about six yards away from um, 1,000 yards now after that reception. Jackson will be, it would be the first Vulcan wide receiver with 1,000 yards since Tom Green did it in 2017. Mitchell gets the snap, hands this one off to Williams. Williams looking for some room, breaks a tackle. Once again, great job by Williams. Almost get brought down in the backfield, but able to pick up about three on the play. Yeah, and well, that's, the, that's what we said at a workhorse before that at running back at carousel. Hell, oh, with Dante A. Williams. Uh, looks like we're going to see a substitution here. Here, no. Oh, looks like, like Williams is going to go out, out, out on the uh, numbers in here for the Vulcans. Yeah, I like it. Five wide now for the Vulcans. Three on the near side. Two on the far. Mitchell all by his lonesome in the shotgun. Gannon showing a little bit of pressure. Mitchell gets a snap quick pass. Able to find Tarrant. Tarrant able to break his way in uh, for first down yardage and more inside of Golden Knight territory. First down for the Vulcans. Yeah, after or not getting a first down in that entire first quarter, or the Vulcan ends already got uh, two here. Hey, doubling their first down from, from the, the first quarter. Love to see it. First and ten now from the 45-yard line of the Golden Knights. A couple substitutions being made. Looks like there's a little bit of confusion about what wide receiver should be out there. Looks like um, looks like Eric Will is going to come off the field. Looks like Jackson Daughtery going to make his way onto the field. Trips on the far side for the Vulcans. He's going to have Langley on the near side all by himself. Mitchell in the shotgun with Williams. Mitchell gets the snap, hands this one off to Williams. Williams stumbles nice. away, will make his way through the hole. He's going to pick up another Williams first down. And with that, at Williams is going to uh, probably double his yardage here. Here, three attempts already. He's got uh, 11 yard yards so Good far in the game. The and, uh, now I believe that's going to put him up, up over around 20 yards. Vulcan's going quickly. Another handoff to Williams this time. Isn't as lucky, but is still able to pick, pick up a nice chunk of yard, maybe about four or five on the play. But coming into this game, Williams had 475 rushing yards on the season and had almost six yards uh, per rushing attempt. So very efficient as Devontae Williams has been this season. Yeah, uh, he's averaging 5.2 already in this game. And up over er, er, around 30 yards now all rushing for, for the Vulcans here in the first half. Vulcan offense moving second and six from the 30-yard line. Mitchell gets his snap, fakes the handoff. Quick pass outside. That time, Taron able to make the catch. Puts on a couple moves before getting pushed out for the first down. So this Vulcan offense, like you said, I'm not, not able to get a first down in that first quarter. Now they seem to be getting in, uh, into a little bit of a groove here. Yeah, and we've talked about this all season where the Vulcans were slow to start Earth this year. Here in the and second quarter, or they seem to find it and start Earth driving, and that's exactly what they're doing here. First and 10 now from the 24. Three receivers on the far side for Mitchell. Has Langley uh, alone on the near side. Williams in the backfield. Mitchell gets the snap, hands it off to Williams once again. And this time, the Golden Knights able to get to Williams in the backfield, bring him down for maybe a loss of one or two. Uh, it looks like it's going to be a loss of one in here. Loss of a yard on a play. Second down and 11. 
Alyssa Williams finally gets brought down. We've seen him a couple times in those situations break a few tackles, but again, not able to get to him. Second and 11 now for the Vulcans. Four receivers set. Two on either side for Mitchell. Mitchell trying. Uh, receiving the signals from the near side from well, the other quarterbacks on the team. Williams will switch sides to go from the right to the left. Five seconds left here on the play clock. Mitchell gets the snap, stepping up in the pocket, under a ton of pressure, trying to get that one off. Looks like the ball came out, tried to throw it, tried to get it to Williams. Looks like they're going to count that as a fumble. The Vulcan is able to pick that one up, and it's going to be a third and long now. No gain on the play. Third down and 11. So I think Mitchell just got back to the line of scrimmage as we look at the replay here. Here, as that was number zero oh four organic and Malachi Woody just coming up with a stop up for the Golden Knights. Yeah, we've seen him get to Mitchell a couple times. Bring up third and long now. Third and eleven from the twenty-six. Mitchell gets the snap. Under pressure again. Quick pass on the screen, trying to find Williams. But nothing there for the Vulcans. Williams gets brought down to the line of scrimmage again. Fourth and long now for the Vulcans. And like we talked about again, and decisions have to be made. You have a, an amazing kicker in Anthony Biko, and looks like that's exactly what the Vulcans are going to do. Send out the field goal. Yeah, uh, Loss of a yard. Fourth down and twelve. We're talking about uh, we talk about record setting for or the Vulcans. Anthony Biko oh, just keeps climbing up that list here. Here if he here or right now fifth in all time on on field goals made in school Biko history. To attempt the three point. Tarrant down with the hold. Beatco's kick is kick up. up. Beatco's kick is good. So with 9.17 left here in the second quarter, we're tied at three. We'll be right back here on CUTV, CUTV Sports 1, the PSAC Network, and 91.9 FM, the Vulcan Sports Radio Network. Every day, thousands of kids start vaping. And I can't let this happen to my kid. So if you want to talk to your kids, you have to get it trending. doing it wrong. Let's go. <laughs> Can we talk? Yeah, what's up? Visit talkaboutvaping.org for tips on when and how to have the vape talk. Welcome back to Adamson Stadium. 9.17 left here in the second quarter. Game's tied up at three after Biko able to make that field goal. And the Vulcan offense able uh, to pick uh, or to get themselves some first downs on that drive, able to get themselves into scoring position, but fell just short and just uh, ran into a couple of stumbling blocks. It looks like the, the ball on the tee gets blown down by the wind. Looks like Micah Tillman will now come over and hold it for Biko to kick it off. Yeah, uh, look, like I said, it is very windy here, here today. I mean, this weather in general today has been in real screwy. As it's up near near 80 today for the hot and very windy. And what's crazy? Was it windy before the game started? The wind started picking up just as the game kicked off, and Biko with a little squib kick and get fielded around the five yard line. Again, able to bring this one up. Big return by the Golden Knights. Only has one man to beat. Going to get pushed out. That's number Stanley four, Branson the Stanley, on the return. So not what you want to see if you're a Vulcan fan. But Gannon, uh, with amazing field position, we take a look at the replay. Yeah, look at er, er, just great blocking in for the return team from um, Gannon and uh, Vulcan, and so trying to get down that air. But uh, what can you do when you got that good out of a blocking unit and then Mike could tell and just knocking him out out there at the last second yeah luckily for the Vulcans Tillman was there to push him out of bounds so the Golden Knights will now take over first and 10 from the Vulcan 27 yard line 909 left to play here in the second quarter Curtis in the shotgun three receivers on the near side for Curtis Snap a little bit high, but Curtis able to bring it down. Curtis deep shot towards the end zone. That one going to fall incomplete. Trying to find uh, Freeman Jr. on the uh, on the uh, attempt. Yeah, uh, but he had double coverage there as Kevon Mormon was starting the shift over 
or from the safety spot. Uh, and then you had Dominic Solomon Jr. here also flowing over, who, who, who I was surprised was allowed to play after uh, the incident from last week. Yeah, that was uh, an interesting display last week in a little scuffle at Mercyhurst. Second and 10 now for the Vulcans from the 27. Two receivers bunched up on the near. Snap to Curtis, that uh, handoff to Blanks, gonna get brought down in the backfield for a loss. Jack Kelechi able to get there first and bring him down for a loss. And uh, once again, and Jack Kelechi being one of those guys, we don't call his name a whole lot, uh, but when he do does get out there, he is, is a big, big nuisance to the offense. So if the Vulcans bring up a third and 10 now, third and 11 even from the 28. And what a, um, what a way it would be if they were able to get themselves off the field after a great kick return by the Golden Knights. 8.28 left to play here in the second quarter. Three receivers on the near side for Curtis, one on the far. Curtis in the shotgun, fakes the handoff, quick pass, complete, it's gonna get brought down past the, uh, the line, but it's gonna get fumbled and picked up and in for a touchdown. Freeman, quick thinking, able to pick that one up and run into the end zone for a touchdown. So Gannon able uh, able to score on that. And Coach Dunn's wanting an explanation on that as he thought uh, he thought he was down after that. Ad. I thought he was too, Ooh, but it looks like it's going to stand. And, and so we look at the replay here, here John. Uh, and there's the fumble. Oh, so it looks like the contact forced it out, oh, and, the, and the Vulcans, nobody jumped on it as they all were just a little surprised, and they thought the same thing that we did. It was Jonathan Bowden with the initial catch, and, and then Freeman able to pick that one up and bring it in. Scarpino's kick is up. Scarpino's kick is good, so with 8-10 left to play in the second quarter, Gannon able to take a 10-3 lead. We'll be right back here on CUTV, CUTV Sports 1 and the PSAC Network. Worried about your friend, but don't know how to reach out? You can say how are you or get a fake tattoo. You can ask with an app if it works for you. You can chat with them in VR. It's all good if you think you should check in. Yeah, you should. Whatever, whatever, whatever gets you talking. Reach out to a friend about their mental health. Whatever, whatever, whatever gets you talking. Learn how you can help at seizetheopera.org. Welcome back to Adamson Stadium where Gannon has a 10 to 3 lead over the California Vulcans and and the lead that they got is a uh, kind of a strange one not something that I I even really saw at the be like to expect you know uh, we saw um a Bowden get knocked down with a big hit but then a gr a excellent thinking by Freeman uh, to pick that fumble up and return it uh, bring it into the end zone for a touchdown but looks like the T once again going to be uh, an issue here as the wind going to blow that one off but it looks like we'll set it back up and get on their way once again it's going to be Oliveira back to kick for the Golden Knights the kick going to go all the way through the end zone for a touchback so the Vulcan so offense the after a decent last team. drive will come back out here first and 10 from the 25 looking to tie things up we can take a look at the board once again for the replay for what happened. The big hit on Bowden and then Freeman able to scoop and score on f for his own team, not something you see too often. Yeah, that was just one of those weird plays as we saw all there. Now the Vulcan offense back out here. First and 10 from the 25. The two receivers on the near side for Mitchell, who's in the shotgun, has... Williams are in the pistol behind him. Mitchell gets a snap handoff to Williams. Williams looking for some room. Going to fall down for a loss back there for the tackle. Was number three, number 33, Obi Ezekibo, able to bring him down for a loss. Ezekibo on the stop. Looks like with that, Williams gonna head to the bench. Two. Eric McCann going to come back out here for the Vulcans, second and 12 now after a loss of two on that last run by Williams. 
three receivers for the Vulcans. Two on the far side is going to have Jackson on the near. Mitchell in the, sh in the gun now with McCann. Mitchell gets snap quick pass. It's going to be complete to Terrence. Going to get back to the original line of scrimmage, third and long now for the Vulcans. And, and looks like Gannon starting to come up to uh, uh, adapt to this offense and for or the Vulcans. So they're gonna have to come up with some uh, more or trickery. I mean, and, and you try and we've seen them come up with some trickery stuff before. Or I mean, and look what happened last week against Mercyhurst. Yeah, we've seen it a couple of times. The bag of tricks for this Vulcan offense is limitless here. Seven minutes left to go. Mitchell in the gun under pressure. Quick pass, able to find McCann underneath. McCann trying to get. The first down going to get brought down a few yards short, but there is a flag thrown in the backfield. We're going to see what this one's going to be, I believe. This one may go against the Vulcans. But waiting to see what the call from the referee will be. But either way, McCann brought down about two yards shy of the first down marker. Waiting for the referee to Give us a signal what the penalty is going to be. Yeah, and it's going to be against the Falcons. That's going to go against Fritz Kelly Edmund and is the right tackle of the Vulcan. And he's got caught with his hand in a, and holding on to some jersey there. So instead of electing for the first, uh, the fourth down and two, Gannon will accept the penalty and move the Vulcans back. It'll be third and 20 now from the 15, 6.45 left to play here in the second quarter. Mitchell in the shotgun, three receivers, two on the near, one on the far. Gonna have Williams in the, the backfield with him. Let's see that's McCann. Mitchell gets the snap, under pressure, stepping up in the pocket, rolling. Pass is gonna be complete to Jackson. Jackson gonna get brought down around the original line of scrimmage. And with that, Jaquette Jackson now has over 1,000 yards on the season. So a huge season from him, but it'll bring up a fourth down for the Yeah, look, look at the replay here as we see Jackson and makes the catch, turns up field. He'll got 10 yards and then some, um, and then look at that, him dropping the boom hammer there. So once again, a huge congratulations to Jaquay Jackson for 1,000 yards on the season. First person since Sean Green all the way back in 2017 for the Vulcans to get over 1,000 yards with a game to play. But now out comes the punting unit. Rosensteel back to punt once again. Rosensteel gets that one blocked. Gannon a swarming to get the ball, kicking it all the way back and is getting recovered. There's going to be a pile for it in the end zone, waiting to see who's going to come out on top of that. I think the Vulcans might have fell on this one, but I think it's going to go as a safety. Maybe because I think Rosensteel actually got on it. And, and exactly right. Rosensteel able to recover it. It's going to be, will be a safety. But Gannon able to block the punt. It's better than a touchdown for the Vulcans, or a touchdown for the Golden Knights. As we take a look at the replay, kind of just a, a bobble for it. A couple players kicking it, and Rosensteel able to jump in amongst the crowd and recover that one. But it will end up being a safety, so it'll, yeah. the score now will be 12-3. to three. Yeah, and that's the first time that we've seen a blocked punt in front of um, the Vulcans. That is the first time Rosensteel has had, a, had one of his kicks blocked. Interesting, and like you said, we don't see that a, a whole lot, but the Vulcans, I mean, they catch a break and they don't. It could have been six, but great job by Rosen, still great effort by him, able to to get in there to force uh, to force it to only be a safety. And I mean, that's the we we saw we've seen a lot throughout the year so far here in the PSAC. Uh, I mean, we've safeties. talked about safeties all season, and we were hoping and we were going to get one last week, and now this one comes back to get us this year. Yeah, but this is the first one that we've seen in a game that the Vulcans have been a part of. So that'll stop the clock with 5.36 left to play in the second quarter. Your score, Gannon 12, California 3. And out comes the Vulcans to kick this one off back to the Golden Knights. will be from the 20 yard line because of the safety. Rosen still booming kick, gonna get fielded at the 21 yard line of the Golden Knights. 
Another great return to the outside, gonna get brought out right around midfield. That was Snell on the return. So the Golden Knights able to get an, uh, some great field position once again. That'll stop the clock with 529 left to play here in the second quarter. California will get the ball to start the second half. So need to get a stop here, maybe get some points on the board before uh, before halftime hits. First and 10 now from the 49. Curtis will be in the shotgun. Bunch formation on this left-hand side. Curtis gets the snap. Vulcan sending some pressure. Curtis now rolling to his right to throw that one out of bounds. Great catch by the backup quarterback over there. Going to be a second, break up second and 10 now. Yeah, a good pressure from the Vulcans that there is Matt Toby. He was closing in, in on that one. I was hoping he was going to come up with a sack. Shout out number 15, Jonathan Kinky, for, no uh, uh, for the Golden Knights on the far side for making that catch. And the referee clarifying that, that, would, that there will be no foul uh, for, um, for intentional grounding as Curtis was outside the pocket and that pass did make it past the line of scrimmage. So second and 10 now from the 49, 523 left to play here in the second quarter. Two receivers on the near side, one on the far for Curtis. Curtis gets the snap, Vulcan setting pressure here. Curtis going deep, that pass nearly picked off but a flag thrown in the vicinity. I think this time it's gonna go against number 15, Jamichael Isom, but waiting to see the call, trying to find uh, Mason once again. <laughs> As I thought we were going to have a holding call on the backside there, as we saw all, all Gerald Brown on getting on getting his jersey, he pushed it up into his face mask, which we, we both know that's not that's a big no-no. But yet at the Vulcans get flagged here. It would be Jermichael Isom, the guilty party on that one. So give the Golden Knights a first down, and they'll move themselves inside of Vulcan territory. Bring uh, they'll take over first and ten now from the 36. <laughs> Once again, we do apologize if you hear uh, any sort of uh, inappropriate language from the fans. Curtis gets the snap, fakes the handoff, quick pass, trying to find Samuel again. That's pass, pass just over his head, incomplete. Second down. Excuse me, intended for Mason on on that play. This is a big chance for the Vulcans to try to get a stop here. Once again, we've seen them do it a couple times, and they need to be able to do it again here to get their to get their offense the ball back right before halftime and maybe put some points on the board. Yeah, big stop here for the Vulcans, and you get the ball to start at the second half. Uh, if you can run, if you can find a way to get at a turnover here or and get the ball back, I can, I can score or all the momentum is on your side then. Curtis pass complete to Mason once again. Mason gonna get spun down right past the first down marker four and it'll be enough for the first down but the Vulcans nearly got to Curtis once again. A ton of pressure being sent and Curtis's Curtis way but Curtis standing strong able to complete these passes for first downs. Yeah look at the stat line here or, the, or what it doesn't show oh John is yeah um, Curtis has been sacked one time but uh, here's the thing there's so many different times that he should have been and as the Vulcans have rushed him uh, at least a dozen and a half times. Curtis in the shotgun, fakes the hand up, quick pass to Mason again. Mason on the screen, gonna get brought down quickly that time. It's gonna be Dillo bringing him Mason down for a short attention. game. Brought down by Dillo. That's Noah Dillo's not, not, the, not, the, not the most fast. Uh. Gain of a yard, second down Are you disrespecting nine. the man's speed? Not, well, I was going to say, he's not the fastest defender out there, but he, he will lay the boomstick down when he needs to. I'm sure he's not going to be too happy about hearing about how you think he's slow. Put that on the air. Second and nine. <laughs> Trips on the far side. Curtis gets the snap under some pressure. Pass towards the end zone. That pass is going to be caught for the touchdown. It's going to be Branson Stanley pulling that one in. Great throw by Curtis under pressure. Stanley able to beat Mormon on that far side, able to pull that in 
and extend the lead from the Golden Knights down to 15. And look here once again, and, and Curtis is getting rushed as we see one of the Miller brothers coming off the edge, edge and, and just throwing it up there into the end zone. I thought we were going to see a tip pass maybe. The Vulcans down 15. Scarpino on to attempt the extra point. Kick is up and the kick is blocked. California able to get back there and block it. Now just trying to recover it. It's going to be Tillman now with the ball going to get brought down. But California in on the block party this time. Uh, not quite sure he was back there to block it, but a ton of Vulcans able to get back there and block it. And, and had they got that, uh, that have been two points if they scored. Or uh, uh, 18, three, he's to score or with 353 or 355 to go here in the half. Uh, if we'll be right back here on CUTV, CUT Sports 1, the PSAC Network, and 91.9 FM, Vulcan Sports Radio Network. Vulcan football is back this fall. September 1st versus Fairmont State. September 10th at Kutztown. September 17th at Shepherd. September 24th versus Edinburgh. October 1st at Clarion. October 8th versus IUP. October 15th at Seton Hill. October 22nd versus Slippery Rock. October 29th at Mercyhurst. November 5th versus Gannon. November 12th versus East Stroudsburg. All games live on CUTV Sports 1 and the PSAC Network. Welcome back to Adamson Stadium. Your score again in 18, California 3, but California able to block that extra point attempt by Scarpino and keep the lead to only 15 for the Golden Knights. Yeah, the Vulcans got lucky on that one, and I thought they were going to take it back. I want to cut it down uh, on, on the 13, but still. Oh. That block credited to Derek Corboy. Kickoff is going to go into the end zone for the touchback, so the Vulcans offense with 3.55 left to play here. In the first half, will come out and st uh, will start from the 25. And yeah, so, uh, look back here at the last play at the, for the touchdown. We see Curtis heaving it up into the end zone uh, for the score. Or first and ten, Vulcan. And then, the and I thought we were going to see the replay of the block kick there. There, but offense is back out there. They got to answer here. They got to stop off the bleeding. This is a very important drive for the Vulcans. First and 10 from the 25. Two receivers on the far side for Mitchell, one on the near. Williams gonna be now two Mitchell's right. Hands off to Williams. Williams able to find some space, gonna get brought down at the 29 near line, gain of four on the play. Clock's moving, 3.45 left to play. And, and uh, Williams is gonna be up over, up around 30 yards on the game. Am averaging about three and a half yards a carry right now for the Vulcans. Vulcans going quickly with that pass complete to Langley. Langley going to get brought down a few yards shy of the first down marker. Thought he had a little bit more. Tried to come back to get to get a little bit, try to create some space to get brought down. Looks like there's going to be a timeout called. Langley's got, he's hurt. And he's holding his arm. Langley. Running off the field injured. Hopefully, everything is all so right with oh him. Oh, uh, issue with the clock here. Please er, er. reset the game clock. 3:20. 3:20. The game clock will be reset to three minutes and 20 seconds left here in the first half. Jackson Daughtery will come in to replace the injured Langley. He receives some attention down on the sideline. As we wait for Three, two, <laughs> the, uh, the the clock operator inside of the booth to uh, fix. It. There we go. Finally, that's been, all set. that's been an issue all season this year. Yeah, I'm not. I don't know what goes into the mechanics of that. But third and three now for the Vulcans. Mitchell, quick pass, complete for the first down. That is Daughtery making a quick impact and get brought and down at the 38-yard line for the first down. And yeah, Jackson Dodger, I mean, we called his, I haven't called his name much this season. We did a lot uh, last year, Aaron, right there being a big factor. 
Ball comes around quickly again. That pass complete to Tarrant. Tarrant with a little bit of room on the outside. He's going to run his way out of bounds, stop the clock, and make his way into Golden Knight territory. It's going to be a first down for the Vulcans at the 45. Or actually, the clock's going to keep moving. 2.50 left to play. He's going. Mitchell in the shotgun trips on the far side. Mitchell gets the snap. Quick pass. It's going to be complete to Taren. Great acrobatics to pull that one in. Pick up about three on that one. And it looks like, like the Vulcans are going to go with that hurry up off. And, 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 and this is where Gannon seems to struggle all the most. And I, I went back and watched some of their film from last week and a couple other games against Slippery Rock and some other opponents that they faced off. Once the team goes in that hurry up, uh, for some reason this defense and struggles a lot. They're just having a difficult time adjusting. The Vulcan still all three timeouts, 2.15 left to play. Mitchell gets the snap, has plenty of time to pass, complete over the middle once again. Daughtery able to pull that one in for the first down. That'll stop the clock waiting for the chains to go now. The clock will move 2.08 left to play. Mitchell going quickly, gets the can pass complete once again to Daughtery. Daughtery going to make his way out of bounds right around the first down marker. Waiting to see the official spot. I think it's going to be second and super and about one. And with that, as Daughtery's already at, at three receptions now. Now for almost 30 yards. He's averaging in 9.3 yards a catch. Yeah, immediate impact from Jackson Daughtery when he came into the game. Mitchell gets the snap, hands this one off to Williams. Williams. Runs into a wall, but does have enough for Williams the first down the yardage. It's going to get brought down around the 21-yard line, enough for the first down. So this Vulcan offense in this hurry up, they're moving. The yeah, and this is where we see e Mitchell and um, start to get a bit egg here for the Vul Vulcans offense. And it's that two-minute and hurry up offense. 144 left to play. Mitchell gets the snap, uh, has some time. He's just going to keep this one out of play in the area of Terrence. That pass, and that'll stop the clock with 1.38 left to play. Second down and 10 now for the Vulcans on the 21. If there is no foul for intentional grounding, there is an eligible receiver in the area. Ref Second down. Referee clarifying there will be no intentional grounding on the play as Tarrant was in the area. Back out on the field for the Vulcans once again is Langley on that far side. Second so it looks like everything for the moment is okay with Langley, but that brief cameo by Daughtery proved to be impactful as the Vulcans I don't driving. I don't know if I agree with that move. I'd have left Jackson Daughtry out there or if, he, or if he was that efficient. Mitchell gets the snap, fakes the hand up to Williams, pass, trying to find Jackson. That one up in the air for what seemed like an attorney going to fall incomplete. Pass is incomplete. Trying to squeeze that one in to Jackson. They'll bring up third and 10 out for the Vulcans from the 21. And. Just like that, at Daughtry's back into the game for McConaughey. Hey, so, oh, I'd look, be looking for him running down on, on the uh, hash marks there. Four receiver sets for the Vulcans. That's Jackson, Daughtry, and Tarrant on the near side for Mitchell. He's going to have Langley on the far side. Williams in the backfield. Two Mitchells left. Third and 10 from the 21. 133 left to play here in the second quarter. Mitchell gets the snap. He's going to find Langley. Langley going to spin and get himself enough yardage for the first down. That'll be Langley's third catch of the game now. Oh, as he's up over the 20 yard mark on the day, a four for receiving. Be first and goal, or first and 10 now for the Vulcans from the 11. Clock moving 121. Remaining here in the first half. Four receivers, two on either side for Mitchell. Williams still in the backfield with them. Vulcan still with all three of their timeouts. Mitchell gets the snap. Quick pass on the outside of Taren. Taren able to pull that one in. Pick up about two. It looks like the Vulcans will take their first time out of the half. Stop the clock with 105 left to play. Yeah, good move there with Coach Dunn. Uh, you got uh, three timeouts. You got a minute and five seconds left. Uh, you got the whole playbook you can use here er, inside the red zone. Yeah, it'll be uh, after this time. I'll be second and eight from the nine, and like you talked about, Gannon seemed to have struggled this year on this hurry-up offense, this hurry-up style in California, utilizing that weakness to great effect. Here, is able to drive themselves all the way down the field in about two minutes, and still with plenty of time left on the clock for them. And if you're the Vulcans, you need to be able to get. Uh, you would like a touchdown here to cut the lead to only eight going into halftime. 
but any points at this at, at this time will do because they will get the ball back to start the second half. Yeah, but I think and Coach Dunn rather get at the six than and the three at this point. Oh, I mean everyone would rather get the six points than the three. And like you said, we talked about earlier, this Vulcan offense uh, had definitely has some tricks up their sleeves in that play Second calling department. So potentially could see some, uh, one of uh, those uh, interesting plays uh, busted out here inside the red zone. Vulcans have come up in a bunch formation with 105 left to play. Second and eight now from the nine. And the whistle's blown. Looks like Gannon are going to take a timeout as we saw again a coach sprinting almost was all was like well with like well on the field to stop the clock cuz he didn't like what he saw once again we'll take a look here at the schedule around the PSAC he's starting with our game here Eric Cap all versus Gannon and puts town on in Westchester or Shippensburg or East Lock game and Slippery Rock uh, goes up to Edinburgh. Well, <coughs> East Stroudsburg, who California will see here next week for Senior Day, a, is at Shepherd. Bloomsburg's at Millersville and IUP's at Clarion. And to round out the schedule, Old Seton Hill at Mercyhurst. Let me talk about the three way tie for first place in the PSAC West. And so far, Gannon want to clinch that title. They're holding up their end of the bargain with the lead now over the Vulcans. Still plenty of time left to play, but they, do need, they still do need a little bit of help. That 1 p.m. kickoff time between Slippery Rock and Edinburgh. They're going to need the Fighting Scots to get a win there. The Vulcans come back out three wide on the far side for Mitchell Jackson, the lone receiver on the near side. He's going to have Williams in the backfield to Mitchell's right. Second and eight from the nine. Mitchell gets the snap, looking to his left. Going to pass that one. It's going to be tipped and caught by Langley. Great job by him, able to pull that one in. Going to get brought down around the five. Going to bring up third down and about four now. And the Vulcan's got to hurt. 45 seconds on the clock. They're going to be third down and five. Third and five now for the Vulcans. Three receivers now on the near side. Two timeouts still to play. Still with the Vulcans. 33 seconds now left here in the first half. Mitchell gets the snap. Stepping up under some pressure. Going to get brought down for the sack. Not what the Vulcans wanted. And that time, number three, um, Malik Bridgman able to get the back there for Mitchell. He's going to lose a ton on that one, about 10 yards. Looks like the Vulcans are going to be content with letting this run down to a couple seconds and uh, I, I take the field goal from Beatco. And that's exactly what they're going to do Ooh, with 1.9 left on the clock. Well, let's take a look at the replay here. Here, John, just, uh, no one, nowhere to go. Oh, for, or no. Oh, and Mitchell on this one. And sacked four times already today. A versus is the one in for Curtis again, and we talk about how, how that defense of the Vulcans was getting to him, um, but have nothing to show for it. Yeah, this defensive line from Gannon has been great. They've been able to get the pressure to Mitchell. But so far, the Vulcans offense keep driving and driving, but just haven't been able to get themselves into the end zone quite yet, just still that metaphorical monkey on their back. Just can't seem to uh, crack it quite yet, but still a second half to play. The ball spotted at the 15 yard line. Biko gonna come out, Biko try to, 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 to cut this lead to 12. A Little bit of a closer range from the last one. Looks like there's some movement at the line there. Biko's kick is up. But the flag thrown, and I believe one of the Golden Knights may have jumped, so to move Biko even closer now. So 
That'll move the ball up five more yards. It'll be a kick now from the 10 yard line for Biko. Safe to say, well within his range. As referee stopping uh, a little bit of debris there, right where the ball is going to be spotted for the. Uh, Biko for the second time attempting the field goal. Tarrant with the hold. The kick is up. Kick is up. And the kick is good. So at the end of your first half, your score, Gannon 18, California 6. We're going to take a quick commercial break. And when we come back, we're going to take a listen in on the California marching band here at halftime. Don't go We'll be right back here on CUTV, CUTV Sports 1, the PSAC Network and 91.9 FM, WCAL, the Vulcan Sports Radio Network. Another season of volleyball action is here and CUTV has you covered. From the season opening Vulcan Invitational to an entire slate of PSAC West action, you won't miss one exciting dig, pass, or kill. All games will be live on PSAC Network as well as CUTV Sports 1 on YouTube. For all things Vulcan Athletics, check out CalVulcans.com for schedules, stats, and more. With CalVulcans.com and CUTV, you'll have the best seat in the house. about how close you guys can get to like what they have like the line is or whatever
give another big round of applause for all our high school participants with the Cal U Band. All right, it's that time for the 50-50 drawing. Get out your 50-50 tickets.
Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Adamson Stadium for the start of the second half between California and Gannon. Gannon able to get the lead in the first half, 18 to 6. California knocking on the door of the end zone a couple times, but not able to make it in. But we do have some halftime stats here, Johnny. What do we have here from the first half? So, oh, after getting stopped off in the first quarter or with no first downs, the Vulcans come back and rally and get at nine first downs in the second quarter. Or to get in and through the first half, 10 and first downs. Uh, rushing yards is also open a difference factor. Uh, from net yardage, is the Vulcans trail that in that spot. Uh, 14 rushes for seven yards. And then on the other side, for passing yardage, the Vulcans also trail in that one. one as the. Uh, the Golden Knights have 180 passing yards to the Vulcans, 103 total off, and it's 110 end of versus 191. And uh, <clears throat> the Vulcans also ha have the only turnover of the game, or have t have the only turnover of the game so far, or with the one fumble, or excuse me, that was the safety, and then third down conversions. Uh, the Vulcans, two of seven, and then Gannett, and two of six, so neither team doing well. All here on third down. And then you have the time of possession. And the Vulcans, 16 minutes to who Gannon's 14. And then and penalty yards, Cal got only gotten flagged twice, two for 25 yards, and then Gannon three times for 25 yards. And like you said, in that second quarter, definitely an offensive resurgence for, uh, for the Vulcans. The problem is it only ended up in six points, two trips around the red zone that only ended up and a field goal in either one of them and that's just something that uh, the Vulcans need to be able to crack if they want to get back into this game they will get the ball back to start the second half but they find themselves down by 12 and we've seen this offense get into its rhythm especially towards the end of that second half but in that last possession they just couldn't uh, they got all the way there but they just uh, stumbled right at the end Again and out will be going from left to right, or uh, going from left to right, California going from right to left. Again, it will kick the ball off. It's going to be fielded by Harper. And that ball is going to go out of bounds at the two yard line. So, California. What, a, what a smart move by Harper. Er, talk about, we talk about football IQ, who saw where that one was going to bounce and just left to go out. out. And, then, and now the Falcons are going to take over first and 10 and from the 45. Yeah, great job by Harper. Like you said, just got his body out of the way of that one as it went out of bounds. And once again, the wind playing a factor. And then, so the ball was at the 35 yard line. So California will start with excellent field position here in the second half. First and 10 Vulcans from the 35. What I was concerned by is I thought that maybe it, it looked like it almost hit him. And I was concerned that it hit him and then went out of bounds. So I was like, no, I, I can't no, believe we're going to start at the one-yard line. No, that was a smart Ert football move that <laughs> everybody hutches it and to give the Vulcans good fielding position. Yeah, I agree. Vulcans first and 10 now from the 35-yard line. Gannon showing a little bit of pressure. Two receivers on the near side for the Vulcans, one on the far. Mitchell hands it off to Williams. Williams able to find a hole and spin up, pick up a couple oh, extra yardage, bringing brought down just shy of the 40 yard line at the 39 pickup of about Barnes four. Yeah, good lane there by Aaron for Williams and the way to pick up up the change there by Mitchell. Vulcan's going quickly here, hand off to Williams again. Williams didn't like what he saw inside, tried to bounce it to the outside, picked up maybe one, again, the two, carrier. they're gonna give him. Paying him past the 40 to the 41. It's gonna be a third and about four now for the Vulcans. And I think the Vulcans realize that at Gannett and doesn't like that at hurry up offense. So they're just keeping the personnels out there and rushing them um, up to the line. Third and five now from the 39. 14 10 left to play here in the third quarter. Vulcans trial by 12, 6 to 18. Driving out, Mitchell gets the snap. Looking to his right pass. Kind of just a duck out of, out of his hand. Not quite sure he had full. Uh, grip on that, trying to find Jackson. That'll go incomplete. Bring up f uh, three and out now from the Vulcans after that excellent field position start. Bring up a fourth down and four. And just like that, a minute and off the clock there. 
and the Vulcans, good fielding position to start, and, and nothing to show for it. Uh, they got to find a way to come up with an answer again here against Gannon. Rosen still out here once again. To kick this one away, it's going to be Cam Snell back to return for the Golden Knights. Snell standing around his own seven or 18-yard line. Rosen still gets that one off. High in the air, deep. Snell going to field it at the 21. Snell working his way to the left side, getting a couple of blocks. Snell in some open space, going to get brought down. Great tackle by Hutchinson. Brings him down to the 39-yard line. That could have been a lot worse, but excellent open field tackle by Hutchinson is going to uh, uh, start the Golden Knights out here at the 39. And I thought we were going to see a flag there on the far side. Uh, there's a couple of the Vulcans players got uh, uh, sandwiched together er, and just couldn't get away eh, from the, the blockers of uh, the e Gannon Knights. Excuse me, that was Kalechi on the tackle. So first and 10 from the 39 for the Golden Knights. 13.46 left to play here in the third quarter. It's going to be Curtis in the shotgun. Hands this one off to Blanks. Blanks able to find a hole and pick up a couple. And get brought down at the 43-yard line pickup of about four. Foreman and Brown on the stop. And they have to come. As I said before, they have to find a way to answer her for Organon. Gain and four, second down and six. Second and six now from the Vulcans from the 43. Lions are going to stand alongside Curtis. Two receivers on the near side for the Golden Knights. One on the far. Vulcan setting some pressure. Curtis back to pass. That pass going to get broken up. Great coverage, but a flag thrown very late. Trying to find uh, Batiste. And I believe it was Tyden Loban on the coverage. I think this one might go back against the Vulcans. And not what you, you wanted to see e, if you're California after a, a good pass breakup. Uh, that just takes the wind out of your sails there. Yeah, I think maybe uh, Logan got in there a little bit too early. They said they credited the penalty to number 21, JT Thomas. It was 23, Ty and Logan, the man that drew the penalty. First and 10 now from the 50. Quick pass this time to Samuel. Samuel going to try, or uh, Mason, excuse me, Mason. Works his way forward for a couple after the screen picks up three. Second and seven now for the Golden Knights. Gain of three, second down and seven. Gannon with a little bit of confusion trying to get to the line quickly here. Bunch receiver on the near side. Going to hand this, or uh, Curtis going to keep this one himself on the read option. Curtis He's going to get brought down first. right at the line of Gannon scrimmage. Bring up third and long now for the, ball, or for the Golden Knights. Vulcans have the chance to get this, uh, get their defense off the field once again. It's going to be two receivers on the far side for the Golden Knights. It's going to be Stanley and um, Mason. Curtis back to pass, has plenty of time. Stepping up in the pocket, Curtis gets hit as he's thrown, and that pass is going to end up on the sideline. Incomplete. Game Great pressure by the Falcons, Miller, Gabe Miller, that is, with the um, with the pressure, going to bring up fourth and seven now. And that's what we've talked about all this entire game. And the fact that at the Vulcans defense is getting pressure there, or just cannot get to him. Yeah, but they do get the stop, and after that big hit, Curtis is going to go out there and punt. Now for the Golden Knights, it's going to be Cam Tarrant back to return. Tarrant standing at the 10-yard line. We've seen a couple blocks in this game already. Curtis's punt underway. And Tarrant going to let that one spin away. It's going to get fielded at about the three, uh, about the four-yard line. So the Vulcans going to get pinned deep inside their own territory. Yeah, they have to come up with an answer now. Now, oh, oh, this is where the Vulcans need to rally. They, as we hear the uh, announcement for the ice cream screen, and our, our 
Vulcan faithful going nuts for ice cream, which today actually doesn't sound like a bad idea for that. Yeah, I mean, you're usually talking about around this time, uh, it's way too cold for ice cream. But like you said, beautiful day here today, a little bit windy, as looks like it's about to start getting a little bit darker here on this Saturday afternoon. Vulcans take over first and 10 from the four. Mitchell in the shotgun. Handoff, or gonna keep it himself, fakes the handoff, gonna get flipped up and over, but gonna pick up a couple on that run. Pick up about six, or about four actually, for uh, second and six now for the Vulcans. Yeah, good run there, but uh, I, I Mitchell all oh, keeping it himself all oh, We've seen him do that a couple of times this year. Yeah, a lot more frequently known Mitchell, not a, no stranger. So hold on to the ball, Mitchell, low snap, picks that one up under some pressure, flips it off to Williams. Williams with space to run, tries to get his way to the outside, and he get brought down Williams around the 13-yard line, so bring up third and three now for the Vulcans. And this is where it becomes manageable for the Vulcans. And you got uh, Williams, um, Mitchell, who can also run and if need be. He, and then you got uh, McConaughey coming into the game. You got Jackson and Tarrant and, and Willis. And it looks like like Langley out there. Or no, excuse me, that's Jackson. And I can't, those numbers are starting to blend together. Actually got a little bit more than I thought. Third and one now for the Vulcans, Mitchell. Fakes the handoff, quick pass to Jackson. That one's going to go out of his hands, incomplete. incomplete. Had it in his hands and kind of just Jackson. bobbled it. And brings up fourth and one now for the Vulcans. And, and had the opportunity to get themselves out of there. Got themselves some breathing room, but the punting unit, once again for California, is going to make its way onto the field. When we talk about opening up the playbook, I feel like, like you could, this could be the time you might see him try to get it again and jump off sides. Definitely something to keep an eye out on, but a disappointing uh, first two possessions on offense for the Vulcans here in this second half. 10-29 left here to play in the third quarter. Again, still with the lead, 18-6. to Rosensteel back to punt. Sims back to return, standing at his own 42. Rosensteel's punt nearly gets blocked again. High booming punt. Going to get fair caught. He's going to be fumbled. But Sims is going to be able to, or Snell, excuse me, going to field that one. <laughs> but Gannon catch a little bit of a break once again. They'll take over with the ball at the 44. And I think the refs are going to talk things over here about where they're going to spot the ball. Yeah, surprised to see uh, Snell signaled for the fair catch but then uh, decided to try to run it out. Did, did fumble, but was able to pick it up. And I think uh, they finally decided that the ball will be at the be placed at the 44. So Curtis and the offense back out there. First and 10, hands this one off to Blanks. Blanks can get brought down at the line of scrimmage. Once Blanks again, it was Gabe Miller, Miller on the tackle. No gain on the play. No second gain on the play at that time. Back. Second and 10 now for the Golden Knights. Nine fifty left to play here in the third quarter. Again, and still with the lead, eighteen to six. Second and ten now from the forty-four. Empty set for Curtis. Three receivers on the near, two on the far. Some movement around the offense. A line there on that right-hand side. Each side pointing fingers, waiting to see which way this one's going to go. They're gonna get. They're gonna get uh, Jack Kalechi on that one, and that'll um, bring up a second and five now for the Golden Knights. So again, and don't decide to stay in that empty set. It's gonna have uh, blanks in the backfield alongside Curtis. Three receivers on the near side, one on the far. Curtis still in the shotgun, high snap, hands this one up to Blanks. Blanks breaks a tackle, and they get brought down just past midfield, Blanks bring up a third and three now for the Golden Knights. Yeah, Matt Toby getting back there, 
here once again to make the stop uh, with Noah Dillo. Oh. As the Vulcans defense and try and to stop him here, here and not get let Third up another first down. Three. Vulcan defense have been great here last couple of possessions. Like you said, need to get themselves off the field. Third and three from the 49. Curtis fakes the handoff, quick pass. That pass is tipped in the air and is going to fall incomplete, almost intercepted by uh, Gerald Brown. And he is mad. I... You have no idea as uh, someone that played the defensive line. I mean, if we got out our hands on the football, we didn't want to give it up. Uh, and I feel bad for the big guy down there. I would have loved to have seen him pick that off and start or return. Yeah, that would have been amazing. And that smack on the block was extremely loud. But it looks like Gannon going to keep the offense out there. Fourth and three. Just past midfield. Maybe trying to get the Vulcans to jump off side. Got to watch the football here. And Curtis actually going to go back to punt. Curtis with a nice punt. And is going to get the friendly roll. It went out of back. Oh, hold, it's in the end zone, so that's going to be no, a touchback. They're going to they're gonna mark it at the one. They're saying it's going to come out at the one. Or that hit the pylon, though. Oh, that, that's... Yeah, I mean, there's some uh, conflicting reports on where this ball is going to be placed. It looks like it went out of bounds in the end zone. And I think they are going to I think they are going to give the touchback to the Vulcans, but it looked yep, like the ref on the far side was going to mark it out at the 1 and yeah. I was going to say that was going to be a tough for the Vulcans. Yeah, and uh, it's going to be a touchback. So, oh, first and 10 from the Vulcan 20. And Cal so far in the second half the offense just hasn't been clicking like it did at the end of the first half need to get some points on the board. 8.42 left to play here in the third quarter. Still down by 12, 18 to six. Be first and 10 from the 20. Mitchell in the gun, gets a snap. Has plenty of time now rolling to his right, trying to find anything. Mitchell just heaves this one down the field. It's gonna be caught at the 42 yard line by Malik Langley, 22 yard reception. Exactly what the Vulcans needed. And that, that's the kind of play we've been looking for. Or that explosive downfield play hey, as we look here or Mitchell on the run and walking the tightrope hope what or the line of scrimmage was and finding Langley Langley coming back for that one and that's what the receivers have been needing to do all day Vulcans good quickly in the pistol handoff to Williams Williams runs into a wall of defenders but able to keep it up for a while gets brought down around the line of scrimmage Walker on the stop it's like a, a Vulcan slow to get up no gain on the play. After the play, they'll say no gain. Second and ten now from the 42. Yeah, might, I'd, have got, I'd have a couple inches on that one. Three receivers for the Vulcans. McCann in the backfield this time next to Mitchell. Mitchell, handoff to McCann. McCann going to get brought down immediately. Loss of a ton on that one and bring up a third and long for the Vulcans as it looks like there may be an injured Vulcan down but looks like he's going to make his way off the field now he's going to sit back down that, I believe that's number 60 John Lazoto. yeah John Lazoto uh, came into the game aim after Basham was hurt. So hopefully everything is okay with them. That'll stop the clock though with 727 left to play here in the third quarter. And the Vulcans after the big play kind of seem to spoil it a little bit. I mean they need if they need to get themselves back into this game down by 12 still the rest of this quarter an entire quarter to go but this offense in the second half so far just hasn't hasn't been quick clicking like it had been at uh, towards the end of that first half. Yeah, and you got to find some way to answer here, here, <coughs> and hopefully, lead with the timeout. All the Vulcans can talk things over or, and come up with a way to get something and going as he's going to the injured Vulcan's going to walk off the field under his own power now. Excuse me, the injured Vulcan down was number 66, Matt Charlton, the right guard. And he looks like he's going to make his way off of the field. Hopefully everything's okay with him. 
Number 78, Nashawn Jackson, going to come in as his replacement. So it'll be third and 15 after the injury timeout from the 37. The Vulcans need to get to the Gannon 48-yard line to get the first down. Three receivers for the Vulcans. McCann in the backfield alongside Mitchell. Mitchell gets the snaps. Going deep down the left-hand side, trying to find Langley. Langley just can't pull that in. And Langley wanting the flag to be called. No That's flag Langley. given. Great and coverage that time by Ty Tiggs from Gannon. I'm, I'm with Langley on this one. Because uh, we saw the similar play earlier on, and it went in the favor of Gannon. And I feel like the Vulcans might have got gypped on that play. Yeah, the Vulcans definitely upset about the no call that time, but... It'll bring up a fourth and 15 now, and, the, and Rosensteel once again going to come back out here for the Vulcans. It'll be Snell once again. Mishandled the last punt. <laughs> Just heard him say over to the bench, I'm going to show you something here real quick. So Rosensteel's punt almost gets blocked again. Snell fields it as a 22. It's going to get uh, break off a couple tackles. Going to get brought down just shy of the 35 at the 34. So the Gannon Golden Knight offense will come out here once again with 6.53 left to play here in the third quarter. Corboy on the stop. First and 10 from the 34. Looking for a lawnmower? Coming into this game, last couple games from the Vulcans, it had been uh, kind of the offense able to get the points on the board, but the defense not quite holding on. But so far this game, the defense has been doing a great job at keeping Gannon under check, but the offense has kind of just been letting uh, letting this defense down a little bit. They just haven't been able to score. Yeah, they got to find some way to answer. Er. Quick handoff to right. Right, so we get brought down in the backfield. I thought it was the, the ball came loose, but it was actually a player's helmet. Yeah, let's see here. It's going to be Gage Hill for the Vulcans. His helmet came flying off. And I, like I said for a second, I thought it was a ball. Yeah, I had to look, do a double check myself. I thought the same thing, but it turns out oh, it was just Gage Hill's bucket had fallen off. Um, we lost a two on that play. Bring up second and 12 now from the 32. Right still in the backfield alongside Curtis. Curtis gets the snap. Under some pressure, screen play. That pass is going to go incomplete. Trying incomplete. to find Mason. Bring up third and long now for the Golden Knights. It's third down. And this is the kind of defensive stop we need from the Vulcans right now. Oh, if they can get one more stop like that, yes, you're going to push the Vul If you get the sack here, because they're getting closer and closer to bringing Curtis down. Hold oh, one more. They drop him back there. You could start with a decent field position in after the punt. But we've seen so far in the second half, of the, de the decent field position doesn't matter. The offense still needs to be able to get going, and they haven't yet. 6.29 left to play in the third quarter. Three receivers on the far side, one on the near for Curtis. He's going to have right in the backfield alongside him. There's movement on the offensive line. Bull falls start, I believe, and you saw Kevon Mormon kind of shimmying his way up to the line. Happy about that one. It's going to be number 54, Jacob Pettit, the guilty party. In that case, back it up even further. Going to be third and 17 now from the 27. Yeah, Pettit, it, it stood straight up. You can't do that. Once you get set at that, that position, no moving. So the Vulcans with an excellent chance to get the defense off the field. I didn't think uh, Curtis was ready for the snap. And just like you said, the Vulcans able to get to him. Uh, Vulcans bring him down for the sack. It's going to be Ibrahim Sonogo with the sack and then bring him down at the 25 and I think kind of a um, a botched play I don't think uh, Curtis was definitely not ready for that snap yeah look at the replay hey, that was a little bit of a, bit of a wild snap to Aaron and, and Curtis is just trying to scramble to come back and find an answer and then, and by then it was too late the Vulcans already swarmed around him and they brought him down another sack on the season for Sonogo having quietly I believe having himself a great season Curtis now back to punt Tarrant Back deep to receive. That punt going to take a couple bounces. Going to take a friendly Gannon roll all the way down to the 22-yard line. So a great punt by Curtis. Ball 
is down at the 23-yard line. Yeah, a little surprised Tarrant didn't try to go get that one and pick it up. Uh, but by that point in time, there was already about five or six Gannett and players down there. So, oh, oh, hopefully the Vulcans can find a way to come up, up with a stop here. Yeah, that's what you call a, a business decision. You don't want to fill that one and just get popped immediately. So Tarrant lets that one roll. They'll take over from the 23 in this offense. For pretty for most of the season has been uh, the the fire in this team, the one that has been keeping them in these games. But this uh, so far this game hasn't quite been there. First and ten now from the 23, 537 left to play here in the third quarter. Mitchell gets the snap, looking to his left, stepping up in the pocket, going deep, trying to find Jackson. Jackson coming back towards it. There's going to be a flag thrown in the area. Pass is incomplete, but and uh, Ken, uh, number 17, uh, Jordan Tolliver for Gannon trying to plead his case with the referee. Yeah, as we see here, er, er, he was kind of had a little bit of Langley's jersey there. Er, so, oh, I think we know where this is going to go. And the Vulcan fans f finally a little bit happy about something like that because they felt like so far this game the calls haven't been going their way. So it'll be a 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down. So the Vulcans now will take over at the 38-yard line, first and 10. So Mitchell now in the shotgun with Williams alongside him. Four receivers for the Vulcans. Or three receivers, excuse me, one on the far, two on the near. Mitchell gets the snap, looking to his left, fires quickly, trying to find Langley in and out of his hands, incomplete. Pass is incomplete. Once again, Tolliver in the area on the coverage. Langley. Yeah, the Second Vulcans down. are going to have to come up with another answer here once again. And for the defense, or, <clears throat> I mean, and you've been gifted it, and with the penalty, you got another set of, set of downs to work with. Now you got to come up with something here, here, or and throwing a Langley aid right now. They're expecting it, and I'd look for or Taren on the near side. Mitchell hands this one off. It's going to get brought down around the 40-yard line. The McCann, the one on the carry, going to pick up about two, bring up third and eight now for the Vulcans. They're gonna give. They're gonna give McCann three on that one. Third and seven now from the 41. Five minutes left to play here in the third quarter. California still trailing by 12. Mitchell with the hard count nearly got Gannon to jump on that one, but the Golden Knights stay composed. 12 seconds left here on the play clock. McCann now shifts to Mitchell's right. Five seconds left to get this playoff. Mitchell. Low snap, able to pick that one up. Quick pass to the outside, complete to Langley. Going to go out of bounds around midfield for the first down. First down. That'll be the third first down on of, the game of the quarter for the Vulcans now. First and 10 from the 40. Langley went out of bounds at the 49, so inside of Gannon territory quickly. The Vulcans go, pass over the middle. That pass is caught and get brought down around the 25. Junior McConaughey. Don't hear him uh, uh, catch too many passes, but that one wide look, open. Yeah, look at the uh, play here as we see a Mitchell will find a McConaughey right eight across the middle of the field. Hold for the first down. Vulcan's going quickly again. Mitchell trying to find Langley on that far side again. That pass way too high, but Langley gets rocked on his yeah. way down. Got to watch that because uh, uh, that could lead to a penalty, and we've seen that come back to bite teams before. It was with Tannen on the coverage. Bring up second and 10 now from the 25. Big play previously by McConaughey to get the Vulcans on the move. 4.02 left to play here in the third quarter. Vulcans down by 12 and driving. Mitchell in the gun, three receivers on the near side. Fakes the handoff to McCann, fakes screen. Mitchell now rolling to his right, trying to find anyone. That pass is gonna be juggled and incomplete. They're going to say he caught it, but he stepped out of Langley stepped out of bounds on the play there. I believe they will mark that one as an incomplete pass. So it was pretty close, like you said. 
It'll be third and ten now from the 25. Vogels need to get to the 15-yard line of the Golden Knights for the first down. Three receivers on this near side. And Jackson, Daughtery, and Tarrant. And Langley, the lone receiver on the far side. McCann in the backfield with Mitchell. Mitchell, quick pass, able to find Tarrant. And Tarrant gets hit straight away on that little bubble screen. Picks up about four. Going to get brought down at the 21-yard line. And now the Vulcans have some decisions to make. Walker and Tolliver on the stop. I mean, if you go for the field goal, oh, oh that's another three points off the board. Or you're already down on by 12. It cuts down. down it's still a two-possession game, game, but uh, the Vulcans are going to go for it here. I guess the, the play in your brain says to just kick the field goal, but in the heart it's to... Uh, uh, it's to go for it. Fourth and six now. The offense staying out here. Ten seconds left on the play clock for the Vulcans. Four receivers. Mitchell gets the snap. Going for the end zone. Mitchell, that pass incomplete, but a flag thrown right around the goal line. And I think the Vulcans are going to move themselves inside the red zone. Well, the Vulcans went for the gamble. Oh, yeah, the pass went incomplete, but you're gonna, you got a free play out of that. And that's going to be a first down. That time, number 31, Reginald Hamlet Jr. Fantastic name. It's going to get, uh, gonna get uh, be the guilty party in that one as we take a look at the replay. Kind of just had his hands on Langley trying to make that catch. So to move the Vulcans all the way down to the six-yard line now, first and goal for the Vulcans at the first six. First and goal from the six. And what a perfect time for the Vulcans to get themselves into the end zone. Four receivers. Three on the far, Jackson on the near. Mitchell gets the snap. He's going to delay the handoff to McCann. McCann gets his way into the end zone for the touchdown. Beautifully designed play, and McCann and the offense able to cut the lead now down to six. Now my question to you, John, with that as we see here, here on the replay, hey, do you go for two or do you just kick the extra point now? Well, I think the Vulcans decided to form a Biko. And the special teams unit going to go out there and attempt the extra point. And the Vulcans, after just so many tries of getting down here, haven't been able to get themselves into the end zone. Finally, score that touchdown. Biko kick to make it a five-point game. His Biko's kick, is, kick up, is up, and his kick is good. Three and minutes left to play in the third quarter. Your score, California 13. Gannon 18, we'll be right back here on CUTV, CUTV Sports 1, the PSAC Network, and 91.9 FM, the Vulcan Sports Radio Network. Vulcan football is back this fall. September 1st versus Fairmont State. September 10th at Kutztown. September 17th at Shepherd. September 24th versus Edinburgh. October 1st at Clarion. October 8th versus IUP. October 15th at Seton Hill. October 22nd versus Slippery Rock. October 29th at Mercyhurst. November 5th versus Gannon. November 12th versus East Stroudsburg. All games live on CUTV Sports 1 and the PSAC Network. Welcome back as Biko's good kick is going to get us underway. That one's going to go back for a touchback. But the fans here at Adamson Stadium getting into a little bit more after the six-yard rush by McCann as we take a look at that play one yeah, more time. Yeah, let's look at this one more time here. Here, John, as we see a, a, a Mitchell Ohl faking it and on the delayed draw play a there, there as he st hands it off to McCann and had a wide open lane up the middle or into the end zone for six. Uh, as Blaze hammers away uh, the 13th in, in uh, times on the hammer. Yeah, and this Vulcan, the Vulcan fans here today uh, kind of on the edge, uh, are sitting quietly on the edge of their seats a little bit, especially in this second half. We saw the last time out here at home, uh, the Vulcans fell in a bad game against the, the Rock. It's Curtis. Quick pass on first down. As Dillo makes the tackle right around the 30-yard line, it's Batiste on the reception. Batiste but the reception. going back to my point, it's Game just five. the Vulcans last time out, they haven't been uh, showing their greatest displays here at home. But now, all of a sudden, it's a five-point game, and this Vulcan team still very much in this. 
Yeah, uh, if the Vulcans get to get another stop here and in into the, the end zone quickly, they, we got a whole new ball game right now, folks. Curtis gets the snap, pass over the middle. That pass is caught by Mason, going to get brought down at the 39-yard line. And I mean, coming into this one, the Vulcans had to have the chance and still have the chance in this game to play spoiler to Gannon's season. Gannon is surprising this season how well they're doing, and the Vulcans have a chance still to just play spoiler to all of that. Curtis faked the screen and is going to end up going back to the screen. Not sure why Stanley on the reception as he tried to go for that fake uh, screen and go and the Vulcans cover that very well. Yeah, Noah Dilla. Oh, right there on the cover. It's stepping up, up, up covering that air from the linebacker position and, and salt read the play perfectly. Yeah, it was Whitaker who was faking like he was going to block and then went for that fade route and but the Vulcans great coverage sticking with him and forces the uh, the uh, the Golden Knights to lose four on that play, a second and 14 now from the 35. Second down and 135 left to play here in the third quarter. Trips on the near side for the Golden Knights. Curtis in the shotgun gets the snap, looking to his left, firing to his left. That pass is complete around the 45-yard line. Flags thrown, one in the, in the backfield, one in the, in the secondary on the far side. I think the I think one's going against the Vulcans, and I think the other one's going against Gannon on this one. So wait to see what exactly uh, transpired on this play, like you said. But I, I think you may be right here. A flag against both teams kind of will offset. But waiting for the official call from the referee. I mean, penalties really killed the Golden Knights on that last drive. The Vulcans able to get their way down the field for a couple pass interference penalties. And um, this is, I mean, we talked about it time and time again. The penalties make or break a team's game, and they can swing the momentum either way. Now the, the Vulcans, uh, uh, with the control of this game as of right now. And I th think they, uh, no, still sorting it out yet. Yeah, I thought I, I, we were going to have, have a response, but nothing yet. Yeah, still waiting as we see the three referees <laughs> discussing what exactly the calls were. If I, if I had to guess, it's going to be holding and pass interference. There are two fouls on the play. Both will be in force. Personal foul. Shot block. Offense. Number two. And 55. Yard so it's going to be two penalties against, against Gannon. It's going to be a chop block against Gannon and then a sideline interference. So that's going to move Gannon back a mile and a half. I've, I've, it's been a while since I've seen a chop block, but now it's going to be second down in about 30, no, about 41 to go. Yeah, we'll see once the play clock or the <laughs> scoreboard adjusts us, but the ball will be placed at the 10 yard line. The original line of scrimmage was the 39. So, <laughs> and the line of gain is at the the Gannon 49. They're second so down, second and 39 to go. Yeah, you know, oh, the casual second and 39. You know, <laughs> <laughs> whoever had that on their bingo card today, hey, congrats to you. Yeah, I'll mark that one off. <laughs> one ten left to play in the third quarter. Gannon backed up all the way to Vulcan Village. Gets the snap. Curtis looking to go deep. Gets his. He's throwing. That pass is going to be caught. Once again, it's Mason on the reception, going to get brought down at the 44-yard line. So, I mean, they pick up a huge chunk of that of that yardage back, but it looks like Mason going to go down hurt. Yeah, watch here, because he got, uh, uh, hit hard, or, or as we see the Vulcan defender or just dogpiling right on him um, and knock it. Um, if I had to guess, he probably got the wind knocked out of him because he got uh, slammed down to the turf with authority, Ian. Believe me, it's not a fun time there. But, uh, the, it's going to be third down in about four. The Vulcans need one more stop here. Yeah, who would have thought that the second and 39 would end up in a third and four? Again, who else had that on their <laughs> bingo card today? 35-yard reception for, for Mason on that one. And while we have a minute. Make sure to follow us on social media, Twitter and Instagram, CUTV underscore PA, CUTV PA. Make sure to follow us and keep uh, coverage and keep track of everything going on with Cal U Sports Athletics. And make sure if you're watching us on YouTube, make sure to subscribe, you know, and uh, we have a, a plenty of great shows alongside all these great sports matches. 
football season uh, ending uh, here next week. Volleyball season just wrapped up as soccer well. Soccer as well. So, both soccer now. They get into basketball. It looks like Mason able to make his way to his feet and walk off the field. Speaking of basketball, we'll be having some of the coverage for that at here in a couple of weeks. Ourselves, first game will be a men's game and whenever they host Lincoln. Uh, be, that game will be, I believe, on the 15th. So keep an eye out for that as we're still right in the heart of the fall semester, so plenty of sports it's activities going on down. here at the Vulcan campus. And five. Third and five now after that injury timeout. You hear the crowd getting into a chanting defense. Bunch formation for Curtis and the offense. Curtis gets the snap, has plenty of time. That pass is going to be bobbled, incomplete. Trying to find Alex Whitaker over the middle. Going to bring up a, a huge third down stop for the Vulcans. Going to bring up fourth down now. And you got to watch out for Curtis because it looks like they're going to send the punting unit out this time. I mean, let this one go away hey, as we watch the replay here. Look at the defensive coverage, double coverage there. There, the Vulcans breaking it up. Uh, Mormon in and Solomon Jr. are stepping up for the Vulcans once again. Yeah, Whitaker's such a big target. I think the Vulcans learned their lesson from Slippery Rock a few weeks ago. This, a, a, a couple of huge wide receivers on that Rock team. Curtis now back to punt. Another line drive punt. That time going to take a f another Gannon bounce. Going to get fielded at the 15. So not the worst field position that the Vulcans have had. This game, they'll start at first and 10 from the 15 with 28.8 seconds left here in the third quarter as we take a look at the remaining schedule of the season. One more game next week against East Stroudsburg. And that'll be senior day a, a for the football team. Also, oh, I guess you could call that senior day for me. Is that, that'll be the last football game I ever get to call here oh. as a Vulcan. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, tentatively, right? Tentatively. <laughs> we, <laughs> You Wait. hope so. You hope so. Yeah, and I mean, and don't get me wrong. I love doing these games, and I've had f so much fun call commentating all these. But uh, uh, the time has come um, for her, her the, me to pass the torch on to the next one. It's been an honor. Mitchell now in the gun, fakes the hand up, quick pass, able to find Tarrant. Tarrant able to break off a couple tackles before getting pushed out of bounds for the first down. Yeah, as we look here at the replay. Hey, and now you got a question, are the Vulcans going to go for another one, and are they going to let the clock run out? Oh, well, and I think Coach Dunn's going to try to squeeze one more in here as we see Tarrant Ter do it a little shimmy and shit ache up, up the field. Hold for the first down and then some. It uh, looks like Mitchell Ole and company is just going to let the clock run out here. Here is we're down to one second. Yeah, the Vulcans content with letting this one go to the fourth quarter. That'll be the end of the third quarter here at Adams and Sam. Your score, Gannon 18, California 13. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back for your fourth quarter coverage here on CUTV, CUTV Sports 1, the PSAC Network and 91.9 FM, WCAL, the Vulcan Sports Radio Network. Every day thousands of kids start vaping. And I can't let this happen to my kid. So if you want to talk to your kids, you have to get it trending. doing it wrong. Let's go. Can we talk? Yeah, what's up? Visit talkaboutvaping.org for tips on when and how to have the vape talk. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Adamson Stadium for the fourth quarter between California and Gannon. California able to finally get themselves into the end zone in that third quarter. That six-yard rush by McCann cuts, cut the lead now down to five. The Vulcans have the ball first and ten now from the 29, looking to finally get a lead in this game. Mitchell gets a snap, fakes the hand up to McCann. Mc Mitchell under pressure, now rolling to his right, just throws this one away. And, and you hear the fans uh, complaining about uh, no face mask call 
as Mitchell kind of got grabbed on his way down. There will be no intentional grounding. It will be second and ten now from the 29. Yeah, uh, and I agree with the fans on that one. And, and, uh, as the, those defenders had a hold, hold of Noah's helmet there. It was Malik Bridgman and Malachi Woody pressuring Mitchell there on that right side of that offensive or that defensive line. 14:54 now left here in regulation time. Second and ten now from the 29. Three receivers on the far side, one on the near for for Mitchell. Hands this one off to McCann. McCann spins forward after a gain of a couple. Bring up about a third and seven now for the Balkans. Run down by Thompson. Third down and seven. Third and seven now from the 32. Same person now for the Vulcans, four wide. Your Mitchell didn't like what he saw there, so he's going to call the audible. Mitchell calling out the defense as the wind. Calming down for the time being. McCann switches to the left side. Mitchell back to pass. That pass nearly intercepted, but brought in by Jackson. Great, great, great throw. Just beat out the defender, Matt uh, Wittanen, on that near side. Bill been a while since we called Jackson's name since the first half. That's only his third reception of the game. I will give Gannon credit for keeping an eye on him and Cam Tarrant today. Yeah, I, I mean, I completely understand Jaquay Jackson, 1,000-yard receiver on the year for good reason. He's one of the best players wide receivers in the country so you got to give him some special attention Mitchell fakes the handoff quick pass to Taron Taron spins to the outside picks up a couple gonna get brought down at the 45 picks up about three or four gain of three pick it down and seven second and seven now Williams gonna check into the game in the backfield for McCann, three receivers still on that far side. Jackson, the lone receiver on the near. Mitchell gets the snap, looking to his left. Quick screen pass, able to get it to Williams. Williams gets brought down after picking up a few. Kind of an awkward tackle, gonna pick up two. Gonna bring up about third and, uh, third and six now for the Vulcans. And this is the kind of manageable all yarders that the Vulcans have been needing to get to all, all day. A third and six, it's third and five, I've even th third and less than that. And But uh, this is still manageable all for Mitchell and company. And third and five now from the 47. Need to get to the Gannon 48 yard line. Four receivers, two on either side. Williams still in the backfield. Mitchell gets the snap, looking to his left, firing to his left, deep down the sideline. And just the field not wide enough for Malik Langley to pull that one in. That one's going to fall incomplete for and it's going to bring up a fourth down. Yeah, Dodger coming back to the huddle and, and hey, I was open. And yes, uh, you no know, Mitchell having a word with the referee about uh, that uh, no face mask call earlier on as the offense will make its way off the field. Clayton Rosenstein in the punting unit back onto the field once again for the uh, for the Vulcans. Cam Snell back to return. Snell standing. He's going to uh, move back a little bit further now, standing around his own 11 yard line. Rosen Steele. Able to get that punt away. Not the best effort from Rosen Steele, but it is going to get a favorable bounce. But Snell is going to decide to return that one. Going to pick up a yeah, few. We're going to get brought down about the 17 yard line. Going to give him about, I'll gain, gain a two, maybe three after that. I'm surprised he decided to to field that one but like i said earlier on make sure to follow us oh, on social media on. instagram and twitter cutv and cutv underscore pa for everything uh cal vulcans vulcan First sports and all of our coverages here that we do with the crew you and i and as long as our producer gary smith and everyone else in the crew here today we've been very very busy the last couple of weeks and things starting to slow down as we start heading towards the end of the semester Shout out to the wonderful crew. We have first and 10 handoff this time to Blanks. Blanks able to break a tackle, gonna get brought down for a loss of a few. Noah Dillo in on the tackle that time. Blanks gonna make his way back. Er, he's gonna lose one on the play. Second 11 now 
11.53 left to play here in the fourth quarter. Gannon just slowing things down a little bit. Not in a rush to get this play off. Curtis in the gun. Gets the snap looking to his left and firing down his left. Has his man. That pass is going to be caught. It's going to be Batiste with the reception at the 43. Big play from that Golden Knights offense. Thought we were going to see another chop ball uh, call as we saw one of the Vulcans got flipped end over, end over end over there. there on the far side. But it's no go oh, as we see either reception here. Yeah, another great throw by Curtis. Time. Batista able to pull that one in first and 10 now from the 42. Three receivers on the far side for the Golden Knights. Curtis going to be in the gun and we'll have blanks alongside a man in motion to the near side. He's going to go back to the far. He's going to find the motion man with the pass. That was Stanley. Going to get brought down in the open Stanley field the by uh, Jacob by Siegel Google. after a gain of about three. Gain of three on the play. Second down and seven. Vulcans need to get a stop here. Still plenty of time. 10 38 left to play here in the fourth quarter. I'd love to get that offense back out there to try to take the lead. But we've seen them do it a couple times and take matters in their own hands and, and take potentially a turnover back for some points. Curtis in the gun gets a snap. Looking, firing over the middle. That pass incomplete in the dirt. Trying to find Batiste once again. Batiste kind of complaining. Wanting a flag on the play, but no flag called. So I'm going to bring up third down now. Yeah, and Curtis had to hurry that throw. Oh, as Noah Silva came and flaunt and like a bat out of you know where. <laughs> I'm sure that's fine to say on the air. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't want to risk it, but yeah. There is no, uh, there is no delete audio option. Not on, on the, the TV on, side. Yeah, not on the live <laughs> broadcast. The radio side would probably would have been fine, but still. Yeah, I mean it's fine. It's fine. Third and seven from the 45. Four receivers, two on either side for Curtis. Blank still in the backfield with him. Looks like as the play clock winding down, Gannon will take their first time out of the second half, and that'll stop the clock with 10-17 left to play. Yeah, I don't think they liked what they saw with the defense from the Vulcans. That air. reminder, the Vulcans will return to action here at Adamson Stadium for As we hear the PA Day announcer. Saturday, November 12th. Uh, talking about it, next week will be the final game of the season for the Vulcans as they will take on as they will take on East Strasburg in the senior the senior day next week, and then for Gannon, still a possibility for that PSAC title game against Shepard. But if Gannon uh, do not manage to win out and win or win the PSAC West, they will face off at home against Shippensburg next week. But still, like I said, plenty of potential and plenty of movement around that top uh, standings between IUP, Slippery Rock, and Gannon. Yeah, as we were t we were joking around on earlier on in the season and how it could have been us and Shepard again. <laughs> I mean, I, I, the, w the way it started it definitely seemed like it, but as the season played on, it's not how the cards were dealt. Third and seven now. On, Curtis gets a snap, fires quickly, the pass complete. He's going to get brought down. That was uh, Stanley on the reception. Going to get just enough for the first down. When we take a look at the replay, Stanley was wide open on that one. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, in the lane he had to run to is what? Oh, you could have ran a truck through that. Stanley picks up just enough for the first down. First and 10 now from the Vulcan 46-yard line. We talked about all the defense coming up with big plays. Now would be the time for them to come up with one of the big turnover or plays that we've seen them have early during the season. Yeah, I've seen them get a couple of interceptions this year. I wouldn't put it past this defense to get one here today. Four receivers set for the Golden Knights. Curtis going to hand this one off to Blanks. Blanks looking for some room. Going to get brought down almost immediately. Ibrahim Sonogo on the tackle. Uh, Blanks going to pick up maybe two on that rush. Uh, let's take a look at the replay here, John. Two, down, and as eight. the Vulcans bring in all sorts of pressure on that one, uh, as they brought the blitz, and uh, Sonoga, oh, just following the play, hey, keeping up with the ball carrier, and only a short gain for, 
for two. 9.03 left to play here in the fourth quarter. Curtis is going to have blanks and right on either side of a man in motion. Fakes the handoff. Rolling now to his right. That pass way off the mark and it's going to be a flag thrown very late as it looks like Sonogo got a push on Curtis in the backfield. I think this one is going to go against the Vulcans. Yeah. And Sonogo, oh, pl oh, plead in this case. And Sonogo not happy about that one. Personal foul. 15 yard penalty. It'll be an automatic first down for the Golden Knights. So they'll move them even closer. They'll get the ball now at the 29 yard line of the Vulcans with 8.50 left to play here in the fourth quarter. Both teams making some substitutions here for this first down play. First and 10 from the 29. Curtis is going to have Blanks alongside him. Three receivers on the far side for him. Hands this one off to Blanks. Blanks trying to find the edge. Is able to do so. Pick up probably his biggest rush of the game. Going to pick up about six Blanks or seven on that carry. Uh, that's the second largest ru rush Foreman for Blanks and today. Toby on the stop. Seven yards on that, or six. We're going to give him second and four now for the Golden Knights from the 23. 8.20 left to play here in the fourth quarter. Like we talked about Gannon, not really um, uh, not really in a rush to get these plays off. Just, just trying to make sure the personnel is right. Three receivers all on the near side for the Golden Knights. Playing still in the backfield. Fakes the handoff. Vulcan sent a ton of pressure. And Kalechi er, Kalet again, the first one to get to him. Curtis, and bring him down for a sack and bring up a third and long now. That's going thir to be the stop. third sack of the day for or the Vulcans. The and Kalechi just went un, uh, unblocked as he was able to make his way back there. Third and eight now for the Golden Knights offense. Empty set. For the Golden Knights, Curtis all on three on the near, two on the far. Eight seconds left here on the play clock. Curtis gets the snap, looking, fires quickly. That pass batted down to Lang, and who else but Kalechi again gets the sacking, blocks that one. Fourth and eight now for the Golden Knights. So oh, oh, now oh, it's, it's decision time here. Or, or do you go for it, or do you kick the field goal and make the Vulcans and have to drive down the field, score, and then get the two-point conversion? I mean, that seems like the, the smart answer. That seems like the more calculated one. But, I mean, if you're able to get a first down, you're able to get more time off the clock, and you're able to potentially score a touchdown, and it looks like they will keep the offense back out there one more time. Gannon happy with what they see. Three receivers on the near side. Curtis gets the snap looking, having so much time. Curtis, that pass incomplete. As he's thrown, Gerald Brown and Tara Corboy got to him. And a big fourth down stop for the Vulcans. And this is going to be a good spot for the Vulcans to start here as we look at, look at the replay. A, a Curtis who had uh, just about all day and the next day ate a throw. Oh, Oh, but uh, here's the problem. Just because he had good protection, there was nobody there er, er, for him to throw it to, and he had no running lane. So, oh, oh the Vulcans are going to take it over or now. Oh. I mean, I don't need to throw, but he can only be back there so long. Brown and Corboy sandwich him as he hit, as he throws that one incomplete. Vulcans now will take over first and 10 from the 27 with 7.15 left on uh, left here in the fourth quarter. Four receivers for the Vulcans. Mitchell gets the snap, looking to his right, firing deep down the field. Has to quit Jackson. Jackson comes back and makes the catch at the 35-yard line. Big play for the Vulcans, but there is a flag thrown in the backfield. But Mitchell holds hold. And this one is going to go against the Vulcans. Number 74, Bryce Perkins is the one flagged on that one. So it nullifies the huge play that the Vulcans just had. Heartbreaker.
And you know Coach Dunn's not too thrilled about that one. He's going to have a chat with that offensive line later. Yeah, I, I thought maybe uh, there could have been some action against Gannon as we saw Malachi Woody kind of signaling and kind of taunting the, the, uh, the sideline for that flag. But that will back the Vulcans up first and 20 now from the 17. That big play to Jackson. It was all for naught. Three receivers for the Vulcans. Jackson and Tarrant on the near. Mitchell gets the snap. Quick pass on the outside to Tarrant. Tarrant has plenty of room. Going get, to get pushed out of bounds at around the 35-yard line. So picks up about, or going to pick up about 17 on that one. Bring up second and three now. And, and this is good yardage for the Vulcans. As we see here, Tarrant on the little old bubble, old go route. Oh, wide open. Nobody around it. And then the Golden Knights decided to play a, a zone coverage there. And that deep pass to Jackson. I'm sure we won't see Jackson get that one-on-one -on -one coverage uh, ever uh, for the rest of this game. Uh, never say never. Um, if you're Gannon, I wouldn't give it to him anyway. Second and two now from the 35. Six ten left to play. Kane in motion. Mitchell gets the snap. Handoff awkwardly to McCann. McCann able to break a tackle. Going to get brought down. At around the line of scrimmage, maybe picks up carrier. half a yard. Yeah, they're going to give him a one-yard gain, so it's going to be third and two now all for the Vulcans. And, and now the Vulcans still with plenty of time, 5.45 left to play here in this fourth quarter. Down by five, need to get into the end zone. He's going to have four receivers for Mitchell and company. McConaughey and Willis on the far side. He's going to have Jackson and Tarrant on the near. He's going to have McCann in the backfield with him. Five seconds left on the play clock, so the Vulcans need to get this play off quickly. Hand off to McCann. McCann powers forward, picks up a first down and more. Going to get brought down at the 41-yard line. And gets the chains moving once again. And that's something the Vulcans need it. It only the second first down they've gotten in here or in the fourth quarter, or as we see there, or good lane. Vulcans going quickly. Mitchell back to pass. Stump is off to McCann. McCann picks up a yard or two before getting spun down. Five now under five minutes left to play here in the fourth quarter. Second and nine now for the Vulcans. Yeah, uh, the Vulcans and it's got to be wary of the clock now. Uh, they're going to have to start driving downfield. The Vulcans still with all three of their timeouts, but like we said, need to get into the end zone if they want to win this game. Three receivers on the near side for Mitchell. Mitchell gets the snap, low snap, delayed handoff once again to McCann. McCann, huge run, first down yard, spins off a tackle, and he's still going. Eric McCann gets brought down at the 41. I mean, we saw that play end up in the end zone the last time they ran in, and this one picks up a ton of yardage. And, and uh, once again, another good run by the Vulcans and workhorses of the carousel of running backs. As we look at the replay here, look at the at spin and run. Vulcans going quickly. Mitchell now rolling to his right. He's going to keep it himself. Mitchell gets a couple blocks down the field. Going to run out of bounds Mitchell after a gain of a couple. Steps out of bounds. More than a gain of a couple. More of a couple, oh, yeah. Oh, just shy of the sticks by maybe two, th maybe three yards. Yeah, eight-yard rush by Mitchell. Got the blocks on the outside by Jackson and Tarrant. Kept that one himself. Second and two now Mitchell. Keep, or keeps him himself, pulls that one away, slides, he's gonna get hit as he slides. And there's no flag thrown, which is shocking because Mitchell slid and he got hit as he was sliding. That, I'm sorry, Uri, that's a bad, bad decision by the refs there. I'm sorry, a terrible. Mitchell keeps it himself again. And to go down after a gain of a couple. And even more, the chains weren't even set by the time Mitchell was going. And I can understand the frustration because that is that is a penalty as he gets hit as he's sliding. But the Vulcans continue to persevere. Hands this one off to Williams that time. Gets tripped up after picking up two. Third and three now for the Vulcans. I can hear Eric Coach Dun and company down there are screaming and down there on the sidelines. It's going to be third and four now for the Vulcans. Excuse me, four receivers for Mitchell. Williams in the backfield of Mitchell's left. Mitchell 
Looking quick pass, that pass intercepted by Gannon Kennan. Bringing this button past midfield, Mitchell and company back to make the tackle. It was Chris Farnsworth on the interception. And he fumbled the interception. And there, there, how about, how about QB1 with the tackle there? There. And Gannon's got to be careful here not to get caught, hit cocky. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, the ball popped out. Oh, and I think Mitchell recovered, but I think it fell out of bounds when he redid. Yeah, Mitchell just trying to find Jackson on that outside, but great job by yeah, Farnsworth. There's the fumble. Oh, but it went out of bounds. Oh, oh, so it's Gannon football all oh, now from the Vulcan 42-yard line. So the, if the defense can ever get a big stop, it is now 254 left in this game. And the Golden Knights will come out with the ball on the 42-yard line. And we can go back to that last drive, potentially that no call on that hit uh, that Mitchell took as he was sliding. Can that be something that the Vulcans uh, look at as a reason why this game could shape out as it does. First and 10, handoff to Banks. Mo Solomon Jr. in the backfield, throws him down in midfield. Banks loses eight on the carry. And that's what the Vulcans need to do here, or just start or bringing heavy pressure again now. Eight yard loss, that'll be. Uh, the Vulcans will decide to take a timeout there first of the game. It'll be second and 18 now after this timeout in California. Still with, still very much in this 2.48 left on the clock after that timeout. And this Vulcan defense have been getting the stops all second half and they need to. And they, this is the biggest one they need to get all game. Yeah, uh, if it was ever time for a turnover or like one of the big touchdowns from the defense, now's the time. I am no, and we know they have big big guys up there. The leaders are there or with Dilla o, o, Toby Kalechi. He Somebody he needs to step up on that defense and, and make a play now. And just looking back at that last offensive possession for the Vulcans, it all started off with that fantastic deep ball to Jaquay Jackson that got called back because of the holding penalty. So like we talk about plenty of times, penalties and mistakes coming back to haunt this Vulcan team, but still very much alive in this game. 248 in the fourth quarter, second and 18. Low snap, Curtis going just throw that one down the field. That pass going to get incomplete. Great coverage that time. Trying to find Batiste. That was Jermichael Isom on the coverage. Bring up third and 18 now. Well, it wasn't just Isom. It was also, oh, it looks like I, I, Kevon Mormon back there as well. Oh, for the Vulcans. And even with that, the Vulcans don't even need to use one of their timeouts after that one. Incomplete pass. Stop the clock with 2.43. And interesting to see what Gannon does here. This is going to be the biggest third down of the game here. And the Vulcans need to get a stop. And I think Gannon will take their second time out to try to talk things over and figure out what they need to do on this third and 18. So I'll be Gannon now down to one timeout. And still with the lead, 18 to 13, 243 left to play we'll make a quick station identification you're listening to us here on 91.9 WCAL power 92 Vulcan or California's best music and also the home of the Vulcan sports radio network got it all in there there's too many there's too many things to say I was gonna say if you want I'll do it it's <laughs> 91.9 FM WCAL California Pennsylvania Penn West California you're home for the Vulcan sports radio network here on power 92 hey look they even got a double we got double Double station identification. Yeah. And, and we forgot to do a couple of them during the game. Yeah, game but uh, right. we're getting close to the top of the hour, so. This game waning on now, 2.39, uh, live time. Game kicked off at noon, so pushing almost on the three-hour mark for this game. And the Vulcans' defense has the potential to get the biggest stop that they can have all year. Third and 18 from the 50 line to get is the 32-yard line. Curtis gets the snap. Under a ton of pressure, able to escape Curtis. Gets that pass off. That pass is going to get intercepted. Intercepted by Solomon Jr. Solomon Jr. gets brought down at the 43. There is a flag 
There is a flag on the play. But Solomon Jr. is going to get that one up, and it looks like the defense upset. I think this one's going to go against the Vulcans. Yeah, Derek Corbo is, is not happy about that. They're going to call roughing the passer. How do you call roughing the passer on that yeah. one? Well, is he was already trying to bring him down during the pass play. Yeah, it's gonna I'm be sorry. I, I don't agree with that one. Yeah, that's uh, an interesting call as we take a look at the replay once more. Roughing the passer. I think they got. Uh, I think they called it on Corboy because he's the one that's the most heated about it. And I mean, and Corboy is letting the referees hear about it, and so is Coach Dunn. Mm -hmm. and, and quite frankly, I don't blame him. Yeah, that's that's just tough. That's the only way I can describe it. Unfortunate for the Vulcans. As now Gannon new set of downs, first and ten from the 35. Clock moving. Hands this one off to Blanks. Blanks, wide open lane. Blanks is going to go all the way into the end zone for the touchdown. touchdown. And the stadium here at Adamson is shell-shocked. Yeah, watch here as Blanks gets a link. And runs right up the up the gut uh, on the number. Errs down on the field. Hold one man to beat and drags him into the end zone on, on for six. A huge run by Blanks. 35-yard run into the end zone for the touchdown. Gannon now with 24 on the day. And the fans letting the refs know. Oh, it too. Scarpino now out to attempt the extra point. Scarpino to attempt the extra 11 point lead. Scarpino looking to make it 12. Scarpino's kick is up. Scarpino's kick is good. So with 2.10 left to play, your score again in 25, California 13. Duncan, we'll be right back here on CUTV. CUTV Sports 1, the PSAC Network, and 91.9 FM WCAL. Vulcan football is back this fall. September 1st versus Fairmont State. September 10th at Kutztown. September 17th at Shepherd. September 24th versus Edinburgh. October 1st at Clarion. October 8th versus IUP. October 15th at Seton Hill. October 22nd versus Slippery Rock. October 29th at Mercyhurst. November 5th versus Gannon. November 12th versus East Stroudsburg. All games live on CUTV Sports 1 and the PSAC Network. Welcome back to Adamson Stadium as Gannon um, get their 12-point lead back with 2.10 left to play. 25-13 to 13 is your score. California with two timeouts. We'll get the ball back. Down by 12. And I'd like to say that we've seen stranger things happen on the football field, but I feel like that last possession just completely took the wind out of the Vulcan sails. But I still have a chance to prove me wrong. Kick. It's going to go into the end zone for the touchback, and the Vulcans will start out at the 25. First and 10 from the 25. And now Mitchell and company will come back out here once again. And the Vulcans are going to have to try to find a way to answer back and make this quick. After or the last drive, if you saw all a couple old things that could have turned the Vul things around for the Vulcans in it, and not only for it to get it called back against them. Yeah, just... Uh, it's a game of a few plays. They go either way. These thinner margins just go to show you how, how quickly a game can swing one way or the other. But the Vulcans still have a chance to make this game interesting. Mitchell, first and 10. Back to pass, under a pressure rolling now to his right. Under, he's gonna hit as he's throwing that pass. It's gonna be out of bounds, incomplete. incomplete. Woody, the defender for the Golden Knights, pressuring him there and the referee once again clarifying no intentional grounding on that one the wind continuing to pick up here as this game moves on two of four now left to play second and ten from the 25 Mitchell in the gun four receivers two on either side 
So now McCann to his left, Mitchell, gets a low snap, throw this one to the outside, pass is incomplete, in and out of the hands of Jackson. It's going to be Jordan Tolliver on the coverage and has to be careful with that. Uh, a little bit of celebration towards the bench and we've seen that called as taunting before, so um, Tolliver um, may deem himself uh, pretty lucky to get away with that one as brings up third and ten now for the Balkans. Yeah, because I honestly I thought uh, the way things have been going today, hey, he might have got uh, Hunt flanked for that. Four receivers for Mitchell. Two minutes left to play. McCann to Mitchell's right. Mitchell gets the snap, looking to his right under pressure. Mitchell now rolling to his left. Mitchell's stiff arm is going to get brought down around the helmet area for a loss. Yeah, that should have been, in, in my theory, he a, a uh, horse collar. Be a fourth and 12 now, and I mean, the Vulcan offense has to stay out here. And it looks like the Vulcans will take their second timeout of the half, and that'll stop the clock with 136 left to play. And you see Coach Dunn going on in the field, having a few words with Jaquay Jackson, as it looks like him and Tolliver were exchanging uh, some fingers, uh, finger pointing and some words to each other. And the real thing I'm interested in is this game going underway, what the other scores around the PSAC have been especially in those games but with Clarion or uh, with uh, Slippery Rock and IUP. Uh, I'm curious myself, but uh, our tech being a little a little stubborn today. Hey, uh, this one's kind of a shocker. East Stroudsburg leading Shepard right now, 14 to six in that one. And then when I looked earlier, Westchester was leading Kutztown. I have my suspicion. I believe, I mean, Shepard already clinched their place in the title game, so maybe uh, taking this week to rest some of their key players, like Ronnie Brown and Tyson Badgett. Now the Vulcans, 4th and 12 from the 23. Four receivers from Mitchell. Gets the snap under pressure again. Mitchell is going to get brought down once again for the sack. That time, Mitchell's Keith Thompson is going to get back there and bring him down, and down. the Vulcans are going to turn over, turn it over on downs, and you see uh, Nick White, number one for the Golden Knights, just blowing a kiss to the Vulcan crowd as he makes his way off the field. Yeah, I'm surprised that wasn't called all, all for taunting, and, but uh, it is what it is. It's all fun. It's all fun in games. It looks like uh, Matt Toby uh, uh, taking a I'm not taking kindly to um, the gestures made by the Golden Knights. And we saw what happened last week and against Mercyhurst. We saw a fight break out, and we saw some players get ejected. Cal's going to take a timeout, and it looks like he's going to take this time to, uh, uh, to get Toby off the field before anything else happens. Yeah, you're going to change up the defensive package here here with the last minute and 26 to go. I mean, that's the last time out, so all Gannon has to do now is nail it, and they'll emerge victorious. They held up their end of the bargain if they want a chance at this PSAC West title. And all they need is a little bit of help from the Fighting Scots of Edinburgh. If they want, if, if Gannon wants to face off against Afghanistan wants to face off against Co or uh, Shepard, excuse me. Curtis takes the knee. And Curtis will take the knee. Clock running down 121 and running. We'll just need to do that a few more times before Uh, before the clock would zero as the Vulcans no longer have any more timeouts. So another toughly fought game between uh, that the Vulcans have faced and that'll now drop them to 500, 5-5 five and five on the season. That'll move the Golden Knights to 8-2 and two overall, 6-1 and one in the conference. Curtis as Curtis takes, takes a knee, they'll need one more for the play clock and the game clock 
little line. And the Vulcans still, with one more week uh, left to play, as they'll take on uh, East Stroudsburg next week at home. The final game of the regular season for Senior Day. And Curtis takes one final knee. 30 seconds left on the clock. And that'll be all she wrote here at Adamson Stadium. Any final words, Johnny, on this game here today between uh, Gannon and Cal? Uh, the hard fall. Uh, definitely did not go the way that we thought it was going to be. But uh, it looks like Gannon is going to go home with a victory. However, I don't know if they're going to end up seeing uh, the conference championship. Yep, as it looks like a uh, Slippery Rock will knock off Clarion last week. Uh, we're trying to get an update on the score or from the Edinburgh game, but nothing has come up yet. And that's, that is it here at Adamson Stadium as the clock has struck zero. Your final score, Gannon 25, California 13. From everyone here at CUTV, from our producer Gary Smith, from my broadcasting partner, Jonathan Sakaguchi, my name is Jonathan Safe. Thank you all very much for watching, and we'll see you all next week. Thank you all, and we'll see you all next time.